The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. It is a Wrestling Mayhem Show, 922 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias. That's the wrong button. That's why I was putting, <laughs> that's why I was putting a piece of tape on it, so I didn't push it. Uh, on the social medias here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk wrestles and some Dungeons & Dragons with you, actually, t- this week. Uh, we got some guests with us in studio. I love when we have in-studio guests. First of all, he is a... Hipster roller skater. Roller, I was going to say roller skate hooligan. Is that a thing? I'm not a hooligan. You're not a hooligan. I don't like hooliganry. You, you don't, I, you don't what? Skate. I don't like hooliganry. You don't like hooliganry ring. on your... You're the regulator of the, of the, of the skating rink? Is that it? I was it? at one point, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the Mikey Montgomery back on the show. Hello, everybody. How's it, how's it go? Supersonic. Yeah, it, well, because you go... Uh, it, it's, it's Tony Chimmel into Vince McMahon. So it's super sonic. I love Sean Collier hit that perfectly this week. Like I th- I think I saw you pop when you hit that, right? I always I always listen for it to see if it's cuz half the time it's like most of the time I'm I'm later on in the card, so mm-hmm. it's like his voice is already gone by then. Yeah, yeah. So to ask him to do that is so extra. Yeah. So I'm listening to see how it's going to sound. But he hit it very well. Yes, yes, that was a lot of fun. That was the uh, enjoy wrestling at uh, what was it? The is the Allegheny Allegheny County Hilltop Fair. The Hilltop, Hilltop County, County Fair. The Hilltop County Fair. Um, yes, sponsored by the Bottle Rocket Social Club. Yes, it's a lot of fun. That's I, I love that that room is also where we filmed the second set of uh, uh, Fight Underground tapings. So was I love, that really? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the room yes, it was. That, where we do the ad that's always in front of the 880 show and everywhere else we put the Mayhem show at. That's in that room. I was wondering. I thought I've been in that room mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Oh, that story and also perfect. with us, the uh, uh, we found her. We found her. There's missing posters. There was there's missing posters when you were on commentary. That was really weird. The unwielding Tatiana is here. We Hello. have found and compromised to a permanent <laughs> end. <laughs> Tatiana Rose. <laughs> Oh, there's no- <laughs> that sounds ta- right. okay. You know what? Tatiana Rose got compromised like at this point, like three years ago. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. sure, that's fine. Compromise Tatiana Rose and Wilton. Tatiana, on the other hand, I'm fine. I'm here. I'm not missing. I- Joe Murphy handed me a missing poster of myself. <laughs> like, and then you found yourself. It's like so. So so Tatiana Is it some- somehow has- metaphorical. Tatiana has sure. been on a walkabout, finding yourself, healing up. Uh, I've been on a healing journey. Literally, literally, literally. Though I have been present for at least two of your injuries. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I need. Oh, I. It's me. I'm the problem. Okay. It's me. I mean, if we're being honest, the common denominator in all of my injuries have been wrestling and myself. Well, okay. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> I'm also. <laughs> I've been listen. Is this? I've been. I don't know why I've been doing this to myself, but I'm posting when I get hurt at wrestling shows doing video lately. When's the? What's the worst <laughs> that you've ever been hurt doing video definitely, for a wrestling show? Definitely that one I posted today, where the tip of the hockey stick hit me in the head at Diamond Beach. Wait, I didn't really? see that. Yes, Wait, yes. What, it, what, I just, what account did you? Post it's on, on the Sorgatron one. Uh, you don't see it, but you see me go sideways, and you have no idea how much I can't see during while I'm getting that shot of KC coming out. Because oh so 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 it's fourth line. It's the main event. It's the Donnie Brook match, and this is that Diamond Beach where there's like all the boats for some reason. Um, it, well, it was, somebody said it looked like a backyard wrestling level. Mm-hmm. It does. I, I played that. Um, and he comes out. You know, Brandon comes out. He does his mosh pit, like, slam dance thing. Well, he has a hockey stick because it's a Donnybrook. And somehow he, the tip of the hockey stick hits me square in the middle of the top of the head. And I, like, can barely open my eyes. Oh. And, and when that, in that shot that's there, like, he's hugging me and asking me if I'm okay. And I'm still trying to shoot the entrance. Is and he, did, did it come? Who like, the microphone? I'm sorry. Did it come, like, 
over the top. Like yeah, this. it was like an over the top. Like that's he like a, definitely did one of these. Yeah, and I can it was, see that in the vid. It was like it can was it it. it it feels, I never looked at it like another angle or anything like that, but it feels like the direct, well, we probably deleted the footage by now uh, of the other cameras because we don't keep anything because, you know, we don't, nobody pays us for storage. Uh, yeah, no. So yeah. uh, nobody has a that, terabyte of storage laying around. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I kind of literally do, but like I'm not, you know, doing that. I mean, it, it, we, yeah, it would be a terabyte like a month at this point, right? Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, we just keep the masters of the switch and walk away unless we have other agreements. Mm. Um yeah, so it's uh, it, it hurt a lot, and I had a good goose egg. And I was just coming off recovering from a goose egg from, like, the week before. I just, like, post head injuries on TikTok, and it's doing very well for me on TikTok right now. Yeah, TikTok's weird where, like, you, you could post literally anything other than the stuff you do for a living, and mm-hmm. it goes viral. Like, my, my makeup videos will get really popular. My book reviews will get really popular. The one I did about uh, the Final Girls uh, support group, it still gets likes and comments every now and then because I have people arguing with me saying it was good. Actually, they're wrong. It's not good. Grady Hendrix is a terrible author and I will put that on record any day. Mm. Sorry. Uh, but like, I want to make sure to TikTok that clip so that we can get the heat <laughs> off of it. Okay. Yeah. I'll say it on mine. Uh, sorry. Uh, but like, can you say it again? <laughs> yeah, can you say it? Can you say it? Say, say it. Can you say it a little more clearly so the AI picks it up, please? Uh, there you go. Grady Hendrix sucks. Okay. Whoa, hot takes. Hot takes here on the Mayhem Show. I'll fight everybody who disagrees. Well, literally, the top video on TikTok for this show is us just talking about the insane clown posse for some reason. It's just yeah, like, it okay, sense. yeah, it absolutely, yeah. But like, you'll 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 put out you'll put all this work into like highlight videos of yourself using <laughs> yes. like CapCut or whatever. I yep. I use uh, I use this YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? Just, pop, just popping a little bit. <laughs> Wait, are you are you like the sound tech now? No, just, <laughs> I just as you were like doing a motion with your microphone all the way over here. Let me flip over. Was, like, Thank you for the help. You're yeah. you're a great intern. <laughs> <laughs> we have found Mike Mikey Montgomery's secondary career. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, or third or fourth after the uh, roller rink uh, discussion earlier on was, Patreon. No, that's that's far gone. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that was retired. the old life. That's that's, that's gone in RIP, just like Tatiana Rose. <laughs> <Get there. laughs> um, but yeah, just the weirdest things will get popular on TikTok, and it's always the stuff that you put no effort into, mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Well, now that I have a bit of an audience, let me put out something I did put effort into. Nothing, no views. Yes. So I've moved into trying less. But putting more of it out <laughs> is what I've been doing because it's just like more opportunities. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, maybe they'll respond to this. And and a lot of times it's just like just hot, hot wrestling takes are like because everybody hates it, which means you get response. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, cool. You If it's just people calling me an idiot, fine. You know, I'm here for the conversation. <laughs> so well, I still can't believe that you got those backyard wrestling people from Australia to respond. Oh to shit! I need oh, to respond God. to them too. Oh, I've been like, I, I've been remind me to respond yeah, to them. We, we need, need to, to schedule. Them. We need to make that happen, guys. If you're listening right now, clip this, Sorg. <laughs> <laughs> clip this AI. Australian backyard wrestlers from 12, 13 years ago. We want to have you on a podcast. Well, we want to. I want to interview you. And I think. I think we we. They, they was, I don't think we followed up on this. Because you were on, we were talking with the Australian backyard wrestlers. They responded to the YouTube yes. clip or show or something like that. It, it's, it, was a, it was a clip of, of a highlight video. Of, uh, I can't remember. One of their... Uh, like us looking at the highlight videos or something it, like it was, that? It was one of their like pay-per-view music videos that they had put out like mm-hmm. however many years ago. And it was just me just going, look at this inventive going, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> And I think yeah, like one of them responded, it's like, "Hey, yeah, we're we're still doing it. Check out our other channel." Nice. And I thought that was thought that was really cool of them. I love. I love. This is why I love the internet. This is what it's for. Anyways, um, let's get let's talk about some some uh, some wrestling in general. I guess we're talking about wrestling this whole time, but um, let's talk about some current. Let's wrestling. talk about what's happening in the world before we talk D and D and such, right? Uh, <clears throat> I know we were talking before the show. You guys have been up on what's been happening since SummerSlam. Judgment Day, all this stuff, Braun Breaker. Um, what's kind of gotten your excitement here watching on Mondays, Fridays, but whenever the hell wrestling is these days? Oh, I love the new iteration of the Judgment Day. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's it, it's it's becoming because I think the old version of the Judgment Day. Eh, sorry, 
the judgment gaze. <laughs> that's that's the independent. That's version. a different channel. Yeah. Yeah, that's Tyler Klein. <laughs> Anyways. You don't. Um, but yeah, I think the new iteration of the Judgment Day is, is really good. It's more it's more dark and edgy than I. That's I think mm-hmm. the 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 original idea of the Judgment Day in Edge's eyes was to be dark and gritty, yeah. and then it became a sitcom. Yes, and now I think it's returning to more dark and gritty with like a side story of of Liv and Dom being gross, mm-hmm. which I, I think is fun for camera um, because you get like. Her obviously going to get her comeuppance from Rhea mm-hmm. in the next coming weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, in my mind, probably going to be the Mania match this next year. If they can stretch it that long. That seems a little long for this. I feel like that's a like Survivor Series, maybe? Sure. So, yeah. yeah we, but it could if, play out. It could play out even play further, out. depending on what they do with it. There, or depending on what happens at Mania 2, you could add another You could add another baby face into the mix, mm-hmm. depending mm-hmm. there. Make it a and we have a, a mixed tag with all of them at, uh, in Berlin. Yeah, so, yeah, I forgot yeah, that. Yeah. So I was uh, driving home. I had a Wayfair commercial audition on Monday. Don't need oh. to brag about that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but I was able to watch... Uh, I was able to watch it on my phone while I was driving on the turnpike. Not that you should do that, but I was able to watch. Most... We'll cut this part out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was able to watch a Nobody's lot of watching. it. <laughs> I was able to watch a lot of it, but I wasn't able to watch the, uh, the, I watched a little bit of Dom and Liv standing up on the, mm-hmm. um, with the crowd talking, but I didn't see what it led to. Mm-hmm. But now that I know that it, led to a mixed tag team. It led to a concession stand brawl, which I am all for the br- I, I feel like we this. brought all the best parts and left the worst parts of the attitude era around like oh, yeah. fighting in the concession stands, going up into the crowd, um, you know, and then added these cool like I'm going to cut a promo on the way to the ring and doing my entrance, which they did I watched uh, DIY did this, but I think I think I think Champa might have forgot a line. Uh, <laughs> and and then Braun Breaker did one last night. These are incredible, and mm. that's a lot to ask of these guys, too. Oh, yeah. To memorize, presumably memorize this, or at least have a promo in their head to do this walk that's timed, right? Like, that's crazy, and I love that they're pulling it off. Well, it's like, it's transformed from the times of, of the Attitude Era, right? Because mm-hmm. that grew out of the necessity to do that, because mm-hmm. they weren't going to give you time to do a promo. They weren't going to give you time in the ring to cut a promo. We got to fill three hours, buddy. Exactly. So now now that they have to fill three hours, mm-hmm. now you're giving talent opportunity to cut a promo backstage, um, do a walk up, and then their music hits, cut a promo while they're walking to the ring. After their match, cut a promo. Walk from their car through the back to the entrance. The fact that and we're, into the ring with one camera. I the fact that we're using up time on on television for a three hour show to watch cuts of them walking from their car <laughs> to the arena. <laughs> have been like really really good like the Sami Zayn one where mm-hmm. like he and Kevin Owens are talking and he's like you know what no I'm going in the same but just just point a little more towards your mouth that's why you gotta wear the headphones yeah girl. yeah put it back put it back I'm just gonna there you go there. There, there she is there it is I'm just gonna that's put okay it out there that wasn't my fault that's fine that's fine well, because I, I mean inevitably when you sit on a couch you get more relaxed or yeah you get more yeah. Tense. yeah yeah um anyways the, you were saying the uh the Sami Zayn one where he was like no i'm gonna i'm gonna take you guys in the way that i used to enter this arena for wrestling shows that was so fucking cool mm-hmm. that was that to this day that is the best one they have done mm-hmm. because you had i think just the energy that sammy brought to it i mm-hmm. think made that promo because it was him firing up for his match and being like oh i'm about to do some really fucking neat mm-hmm. um but then you have silly ones like this might be controversial. I thought the Cody Rhodes one was a little too much. The one where he walked the dog to the ring. Oh, it Not wasn't just that. It part. wasn't just that. It was it was him sitting in his bus going, <sighs> <laughs> and, then and, then, and then and then walking out of the bus, <laughs> and then and then and then the hand off, and then the handoff from 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 the thing to. From the handoff from the it, ah, just get, and when, the I, dog, oh, and, and here's and Arn Anderson. You need to tell me, dude. I, I, as my wrestler brain goes crazy in those moments, because it's like, because <laughs> it's like he called 
his entire match. I know he called his entire match in his gear. So mm-hmm. he then w- called his entire match, walked back to his bus, waited for this camera crew to get here. And then and then he's sitting there for an awkward amount of time until they're like, and and he's like, now all of a sudden you have to act like you're calm and it's all magic, baby. First of all, well, who was his opponent that night? That was a so uh, that was Solo. Solo. Yeah. You don't think Solo didn't have to meet him on the bus? You really think Cody left the bus? Like, uh, <laughs> don't, don't. you don't think he went to the locker room one time? I think you don't that, think he got I think catering. That is his locker room. You, you don't think he got? No, you don't think he got catered? Well, no, no, wait a minute. Let's give Cody Rhodes some credit because don't forget that he was turned into a meme a couple years ago for going out after like, I think it might have been AEW, but he for after the show he went and helped with teardown. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I hadn't seen that. No, that. It hasn't circulated in a while, but yeah, there was a picture of him like sweeping the ring after a show, like a big show, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and everybody was like, "See, Cody Rhodes isn't too good for this." And I'm like, "Actually, <laughs> your one, your point is okay, but also that is actually kind of cool that he's allowed to help with ring crew because, mm-hmm. from my experience, most most uh, arenas pull in union workers to do everything on oh, ring yeah. crew. So yes. nobody's allowed. Yes. Nobody's allowed to yes. touch the ring. And so, that was the, that was the thing with Immaculate, right? Mm-hmm. Cuz you had a bunch of union yep, yep. You had a bunch mm-hmm. of union guys uh that that they they work for that Local place. Yep. Uh New Japan when they do the big venues, like you know when we did the uh, Palladium in New York City. Um but yeah, yeah, same thing. And they had a, like the dark hour and all that kind of stuff. So yes. I think it was just Brand- it was I think it was just uh Brandon and KC telling them where where everything goes. Like, this yeah. here, this here, this Ordering around the, the yeah. good news No, is, seriously. Yeah, yeah, the good news is with the only that, thing they would let us do was tighten the ropes. Mm-hmm. The good news is with Stage A E and even uh the place out in Oakland that AEW goes to that I always forget the name of. Uh the good thing about those venues The Pete. Hmm? The Pete. Peterson events are? Question mark. I don't know. I didn't. We're on pit. Yeah. Well, right. Whatever that arena out in Oakland that is a part of Pitt's campus mm-hmm. uh, that AEW uses. Um, the good thing about those venues is that it's Local 3 doing them as well as PPG events. Mm-hmm. And Local 3 has been doing all of the wrestling shows pretty much for years. So most of the guys so that... Know it. Yeah, most of the guys that are called in to do those ring crews, they know mm-hmm. how to set up. For yeah, them. they've yeah, learned good. at this point. Uh, a friend, friend of the show, uh, uh, that used to be on here, he does a lot of the builds and teardowns for that. He also does concerts too, so yeah, yeah he's very familiar with those. So local three is very busy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, anyways. So I, I, back to WWE generally, um, but yeah, no, I, I think I think it's an interesting stretch. They're not all going to hit. No, you know, we're going to have a miss. Like I think there was a point. There was a point watching Friday's uh, show where the you know again DIY is doing the doing the walkout and they like there's a point where they stand there for a second and Johnny just looks over at Champa <laughs> and it's just like you're too funny you know kind of thing right um the I you know it was it was not long but it was long enough I know like when you're forgetting something in the ring in a promo that's like an eternity right oh yeah you are right. live you're alive on a camera on Fox. You know, yeah. like that's that's gonna be that was like uh, uh i'm sure alarm bells were, were coming off but also like having to do that and you know, i've always been amazed by you know somebody wrestling a match mike you had an insane night in enjoy for instance right uh and then i think you even got on the mic afterwards right i did and yeah. and i don't think there was any pointed like promo or anything that you had to hit some marks on that i no, call no no but, but like, there was something i had in in my in yeah my yeah exactly that I to get across exactly sure. that was more just kind of like a response to everything that happened at that point i right? really wish they would release that that promo mm-hmm. just sort of like on its own mm-hmm. because it was the, fire yeah, yeah. It was great. Uh, but 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 like doing something like you did and then you're like Drew McIntyre or somebody, and now you got caught a ten minute promo after you just did all that. Oh, like my that God. seems crazy to oh, me. Yeah, I got to make sure I didn't get knocked loopy, so I remember my damn lines. You for know, sh- in my, in my head, is for how sure. Works. Yeah, but I mean, it, there's also I don't know. There's also a sense of security in it too, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like everything there, I feel like is so regimented, and there's a there's less margin for error there than there is for indie wrestling. Whereas like they kind of have like it written down for them already. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if, if I come up with something in my head, 
Mm -hmm. I might have something completely different in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just overthinking it and blah blah blah, and it's like, or, oh, or original... responding to something that happened in the match, maybe that happened differently. Than exactly, it was like I could lose right? my yeah. place there, but I feel yeah. like I don't know. It's almost more of a rehearsal too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where it's some of the newer talent, you know, they have gotten the, into the um, in, in into the habit of like practicing their matches beforehand mm -hmm. where it's like an indie wrestling you never practice your match beforehand. yeah yeah you get to the you get to the venue and you call your match there and then and then you learn what your promo is and yada da 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 whereas i feel like i mean it could be different because you know tv the nature of tv is it's always changing yeah. right but you get to the venue that day and you s sort of have an idea of where the story is going have what's expected of you yada da 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 Mm -hmm. So I feel like it, there's a little more security in in having something prepared for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's argument of your voice and everything, but other than that, like you know, I mean, it you're a, you're a player. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but it does seem like the things are a little looser. I I would be curious to see because I remember um, my friend would sneak me the scripts every once in a while. They found crumpled up in the trash, and you would see like word for word what Roman Reigns said that night and stuff like that. I think I still have them in the back. Um, and, uh, I think, I think an old writer like sent us something too, from like a SmackDown script from like mm -hmm. the two thousands. And yeah, it's, again, it's like, it's like, okay, this was word for word and this is the camera cue and this is the cue for the video. Da, 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 da. And I wonder if that is looser, is it more bullet points for certain people they trust to do that? You know, um, like I think like, you know, the rock Chris Jericho, they can go on their own, right? They don't necessarily need to have a word for word line roman was definitely having fun with that the suffer and succotash night for instance right you can tell people are writing shit for him right well so. i mean it, to be fair it's like i've never seen a full script of it mm -hmm. but i can't imagine everything on the page is written line for line right where it's like maybe roman had his full promo promo thing but it's like mm -hmm. a couple of matches later it's like you have this guy it's like cuts a two minute promo yeah yeah and that's it i think it, i think it'd be surprised how on the nose they had to be because I, I i'm pretty sure it was pretty word for word at the time especially especially like 10 years ago right so anyways well a lot to talk about and they're not the only company in town but we'll be uh getting into that but thanks for everybody that is supporting our show tonight whether you're in the chat room on multiple place, multiple places that we're streaming including i see uh hey i see true prince pro out there in the Facebook chat, as well as uh, uh, Tina Keys in Seattle. Ponder's hanging out with us tonight. Uh, Mikey's going to go get some of that pizza. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody that does support the show. Our friends at the fan of the show level on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Bo diggity. Woo. 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 They're busy with pizza. I have no boobs. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it again. Bo diggity. Woo. Thank you. Bye. Team Hammerfest, Tupac family, <laughs> Megan Nelson, Bubba Brewer, and Jason French at the Poppy Club level. Dave Prodner, spouse of Rooster Lee Affair at roosterlyaffair.com, and Ratchet and Trench Coat, Tony Kincaid at the Pizza Club level. The Riz, and at the manager level, Bradley and Tina Keys. Thank you, everybody, that's supporting the show. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, we have the Patreon-only feed that we do live here, where we go on a bit before the show, and we almost had another podcast. <laughs> we talked we a lot did. about like some of this. Um, kind of had a good pre-chat and talked a lot about the roller rink. Um, we did. And it video. Very, and it was a very good conversation yes. about the roller rink. It was it was, yeah, there was a lot of, I learned a lot about the roller rink and everything with Mikey. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to, I mean, if you really want to learn about Mikey and the roller rink, go to patreon.com slash, uh, what is it? Patreon.com slash uh, indie wrestling.us. No, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Wrestling Mayhem Show. We don't show. have Patreon for indie. Sorry. We have a yeah. subscription where we give you shows. That's right. Over I am subscribed to that. Yes. You know what else you can do? Just see? wash my own matches. <laughs> You know what I was about to you say. Know you know you what can else? ask. You know you can ask. No, I don't want to. You don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to ask. I just want to have them. Remind me to add you to a Facebook chat later. Anyways, you're saying. I was about to say, well, you know what else you can see on the, if you get a subscription, you can see all of the 880 shows, mm -hmm. including all of the fr Fridays on Fits Matt shows and all Thursday night fights. And you can try to pinpoint the point where Tatiana got hurt. It's not that hard to find. Can I tell you my pitch for 880? <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. So I got inspired watching the Olympics. If you're on audio, they're eating pizza right now. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> just just looping them in.
So I got inspired watching the Olympics and I want to do the 880 games. I come in with a giant firecracker. I run all the way down Kensington Avenue, <laughs> no. or all, the, all the way down uh, Fifth Avenue or Fifth Avenue. Fifth, I run all the way down Fifth Avenue, which is like across the bridge. Shots of you going oh across the bridge past the construction workers. <laughs> and then it's just a bunch of different match types, maybe a couple of death matches. Who knows? Just just different goofy match types. Maybe There's going to be a break dance off now. Break dance off. Uh, maybe a red light, green light match. Hundred or uh, what's the closest to uh, Snoop Dogg in Pittsburgh that we can get for this to preside over this? Um, Cliff Klepto. Sure, Sean Collier. <laughs> Sean, Sean Collier. Sean Collier. <laughs> Sean Collier as Snoop Dogg. That won't be a problem. <laughs> He's the most famous Pittsburghian I know. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, we, we we could have some options there. Anyways, I like this. Oh, I mean, we already have a World Series, so you saying? No, I was going to say, I feel like we can find... I feel like Andrew McCutcheon counts as the most famous Pittsburgher right now. Mm. But I feel like he has a very high rate that we may not quite be able to fulfill. No, the reason I said Sean is he would just do it. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> Sean's there anyway, so... Sean. Hey, Sean, I got this bit. And, and I know <laughs> you're going to say was, yes. Sean was going to be there anyway. He just put a microphone in front of Just like pull the side, like, hey, we have an idea. What do you think about this? <laughs> we'll get to get a Jagoff crew. We'll see if Mikey and Big Bob are in. Actually, they'd probably be in for it. I've always wanted to get them connected with wrestling, actually. Anyways, um, so over in AEW, you know, we're so we're we are uh, war- we're we're gearing up for the Wembley Stadium show. Uh, I believe that's next Sunday. We'll talk about that in depth next week uh, as we do do the breakdown for that show. Hey, they're giving us a full week, extra week in between All In and All Out, so that's kind of nice. Uh, <laughs> and um, but uh, but anyways, like some of the biggest news, you know, of course, it came out of the story that uh, supposedly there was a blow up between old friend of the show Britt Baker and MG- MJF uh, that led to Britt being suspended. That part seems to be confirmed, but there was um, apparently the stories about what actually happened. MJF was on some podcast um, where he was kind of going on. He basically the, this, he was like, "What? Let me know if this is the smell test." Um, I got angry and physically threatened uh, 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 and ran into the women's locker room and punched a wall in front of somebody to intimidate them. Does that sound like something that I would still be with the company right now? Uh, was his kind of uh, make on that? So, um, so, so don't he, always believe what you read. Was he insinuating that she did that? No, 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 no. They're they're insinuating that he came in and did that and came into the women's locker room I and did that. I think that was more of to like, her. Yeah, that that feels more like a. Uh, this is absolutely not something that would have happened. Yes, and I would still be regularly on tv con- in consecutive weeks if it was a thing that happened yeah, exactly like not even somebody in his position and stature with the company and everything right and the fact that she was potentially fined or anything and nobody knows the details of it and she's not apparently crying over it either and she's still on the wembley show so you know so that's that's what's going on there so it's just it's just another like thankfully i'd never heard these stories until he brought them up which means I'm reading the right places or not reading the wrong places, which is actually, I'm not reading any news. Um, but even though a lot of it pops up in my feed because I happen to like some wrestling stuff. Um, so, but I, I don't know. It, it's one of those, like uh, the, the alleged story uh, the more believable version of the story is that she said something and Alicia, a I think her name is, um, I, 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 God bless you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, Rand MJF told him there was a blow up and she got suspended. So, which seems peculiar on the face of it as it is. So it's it's just one of those things. Either way, like everybody's looking for drama. Everyone wants the drama behind the drama. So, you it know, seems like, it, it, but it, I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of drama over there. I can hear myself, and I should. I there should it be is. Better on that. It seems like there's a lot of drama over there Mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of drama on the other side of the pond which is i mean there's a lot of conceived like mm -hmm. contrived drama obviously Mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like there's any real harshness on the other side of the pond right now well i think 
I think whoever would, I think I read a rumor and I'm again, not going to do names because I don't want this to come back. So asterisks on the rumor. As- yes. Rumor. Always asterisks on the rumor, Ask. not news, not solidified. This is not news. But this thing not I've heard. <laughs> I read a rumor that one of the people that was in the, uh, latest big round of releases from the WWE was released because they were the person that was leaking a lot of like drama Mm -hmm. and news and other stuff that was Mm -hmm. happening. And if that is true, that would correlate with why we're not seeing like so many like backstage drama or, Mm -hmm. you know, spoilers from the WWE because either they did in fact find the person that was leaking everything or whoever's done it did, Spartaned up and was gonna and is laying low for a while until mm-hmm. they feel they can get away with it again. Sure, and that leads me to believe that there's probably there's most definitely somebody in AEW who's doing similar. There mm-hmm. may be more than one person, and so I think that's why we're seeing more drama come out of AEW because it's they don't have as big of a hold over their employees as the WWE has. I have. I believe they have the potential to grow that kind of hold, but they are still a relatively new company. They don't mm. have as much overreach. Say that, yeah, WWE has several years, even though, you know, the head of the company that, that really kind of orchestrated a lot of that one, you don't have the fear of God probably as much as you used to at that company. It seems like the general sentiment, but that in a positive way. Um, but also like they have an HR that deals with wrestlers and has for years and years and years and years. Right. And, and AEW is five years deep. Right. So, and to the last I knew AEW shared an HR department with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. So, which is an entire, yes, athletes, but an entirely different animal to deal with wrestling. issues and internal investigations on what happened backstage and all this kind of stuff. Do they have a talent relations at AEW? I believe Christopher Daniels was the talent relations. Yes. Was the, ta- or is currently. Well, I don't the know. They on screen, they moved him to a different role. I don't know if he, he, he officially changed roles. Like I just found out that Rocky Romero is an executive, uh, vice president, executive producer at both new Japan and AEW. It was mentioned on RJ city's show when he was on last week. Huh. Um, I, I knew he was, I knew he was office at new Japan cause that's somebody we interface with, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that he also had a role, which makes sense cause he pops up all the damn time over there. Um, so I love that there's like crunching ASMR of pizza on this show going on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to make I, you big on TikTok. To, like, take my bites we'll away from the microphone and it's not, it's, it's picking me up very, mm-hmm. it picks up my pizza crunching better than it picks up my talking. These are that's good microphones. Me. These are good because the crunching is closer because the, because the crunching is like vibrates down the crust away from your mouth. We're trying to chocolate rain it. That's right. Chocolate rain. Crunch away from the microphone. Well, I don't know if the crunching will survive all the processing for the podcast version, but uh, just, you know. Um, just, just turns I'm into trying, static. I'm trying yes. so if you hard play to it make it ba- easier. <laughs> if you play it backwards, it's, it's, devil, <laughs> it's the devil trying to send you a message. Hey, if, hey. if you play it backward, it'll give you spoilers <laughs> for all in London. <laughs> hey, you were not supposed to reveal that information. What? Oh, the, yeah, sorry. We're supposed to tell him that. Now I gotta, now I gotta go through a whole retcon thing. Retcon? We'll fix it in post. Um, <laughs> Tati ASMR pizza is the new is the next TikTok. <laughs> Hell yeah! Just it's all the crunches. Be. It's like the thing where you're like, "Hey, just give me all the breaths. Like, give me all the crunches." <laughs> just like <laughs> you ever seen my, that? Those are my favorite when it's like, <laughs> no, dude, that's my favorite when it's like a guy <laughs> at like a car dealership and it's like, I gave my 22 year old intern the phone to record a commercial and this is what <laughs> I got back. <laughs> And it's just a video of him going throughout the lot, just going. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what works on TikTok. Okay, the, the, the ASMR, like, oh, uh, popular girl at school does your hair once, always drive me crazy. Because just, like, they're running their fingers through, like. And then it's just so much just, like, chewing. Yeah, it's so much chewing, and they're, like, running their fingers Tile through noises. synthetic wigs. So it, <laughs> It sounds awful, and they I'm just like. They always have a like, bunch of rings and bracelets on, so it's just a bunch of tactile noises. And their nails are always like an inch and a half long, and it's, it's like, overstimulating. What? Why? It's so overstimulating. It's like when you know, it's like when you try to watch pedicure videos, and it's got that background music that's just too loud. Mm-hmm. 
I love that we have two segments now tried to talk wrestling but have offshooted. This so is the sorry, pure sorry. no 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 don't apologize. This is the pure spirit of this show from the beginning of <laughs> is side jags like this, is rat holes like this. This is great. Um what also, were we talking about? HR departments? HR, HR departments. We don't have one. No, Actually, Missy's the HR department uh in, in our company. That seems so, that seems like a violation in the in the is it? Right. I mean we have it's literally just us. So and everybody else is a Loose contractor, we'll say. Loose Just like contract. wrestling. <laughs> Just like wrestling. Shut up. <laughs> that is certainly a way to describe what we yeah. do. Yes. I don't know if I've ever seen a piece of paper with my name on it my, in my old right wrestling, unless it was an envelope <laughs> <laughs> in I wrestling. Feel like, I feel like I have. And I mean, I feel, it was at one of those promotions where I did like, have to sign a 1099 form one time. Yeah. I did too. I trying to remember where that was somebody had waivers i know for a bit waivers a couple sure. a couple places of mm-hmm. wa- have had waivers usually it's venues that have waivers um it's one usually two, not companies yeah one or two companies have i can't remember where i they remember were. when owa worked uh um was at king of clubs they mm-hmm. had they had their own waivers covid we did covid companies mm-hmm. did. sure the, yeah the hey you're doing this and covid's a thing and don't sue us. Well, it, was, it was like a, they would always send me a PDF and then be like, uh, send me back the completed PDF and then your uh, your um, your test, right? So send in the test. Title option is loose contractor for Sidekick Media. Thank you. Um, so, wow. We have a double shot of PLEs, Labor Day weekend. Tina's telling us in there. Uh, Bash in Berlin and the NXT No Mercy is happening. Labor Day weekend, but no AEW this time. So, you know, um, how are we feeling about NXT? I'm a little bit sour on it. I, really? I haven't been watching. I mean, I've, I've watched I haven't a been in a hurry bit. to, but yeah, it's, it's just a lot of, I don't know if they know what they're doing with their women's divisions. It feels mm. like every segment that ends in with like a, a women promo just ends with the whole locker room going, <laughs> And then the heels it's gotten, break it up and the baby faces. It's break gotten it up. a little catty, hasn't it? It's very catty. Yeah. And it's all in the same set. Mm-hmm. Nobody there's no different Like the only the tone. women only hang out in this room over here, kind of thing. It, right? It's like it'll be like two baby faces talking mm-hmm. about being like, Hey, you go you did a good you did good in that last match that you just had. And then a, and then a heel girl will come up and be like you're nothing it's all mean girl it's all mean mean girl promos yeah and then and then then it's like oh yeah well how about we find out in the ring tonight and she's like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna mop the floor with you and then and then they start yelling yelling at each other and then here comes the the baby faces to 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 bring the baby face girl back and here comes the hurls the Mm -hmm. the heels to bring the heel girl back it 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 ends the same way every time Mm -hmm. also it seems really strange that like they won't let any sort of women's stable stay together for a long amount of time. No, it mm-hmm. breaks up so quick. <laughs> and that could be the nature of the developmental edge thing that they're doing. But uh, man, I don't, I don't know. They look like they're trying to step up, lean into this uh, CW thing. Like they're I doing, know. they're go- they're hitting the road and everything. Sure. So but I think for the longest time that they, um, they didn't keep stables and stuff together in nxt mm-hmm. because they they saw the potential of it's like oh well we may need this guy on tv in a week mm-hmm. you know you never mm-hmm. know at yeah that. yeah because well, because because you know p dunn's coming back and forth doing smackdown raw nxt every week <laughs> and it's like he's in three different storylines you don't know what he's doing well like <sighs> i i remember Oh, what was that girl that team that was teaming with Thea for a while and like was gonna help save the university? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what her name is. I can't remember either. But I liked that. Like she eventually, like pom poms. No, 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 no. I can't remember. No, she didn't. But she <laughs> is like she came around to being a part of Chase U and like realize and like trying to help the university. And then they introduced. More women's wrestlers from the roster to be in Chase U. Is that a yearbook? Yeah, it's the cal. No, no, it's, it's the, the Chase calendar. U are there calendar. Na- are there names on this thing? It's that one. It's that one. It's yeah. that one. It's that, that one there. It's that one right there. And they, I they had something good going with like her showing Thea to like be more individual outside of like the college thing. I thought that was good. And then her like also coming around at the same time and it's sort of evening out where it's like they're a team and you know, they're both going to go to school together. And then they introduced 
more women from the roster as also students at Chase U. And I thought that's a cool idea that this is like an in-house university Mm -hmm. that multiple people on the roster are attending. That's cool. But then all of a sudden, what's her name turned on Thea and then all of the other girls turned on Thea as well. And I'm like, what was the point? You mean JC Jane and look, they were just buddies riding each other. Why would you Look say it that. like that? What? what? They're literally riding each other. <laughs> I know, but why did you it's say a, it like this that? Is de- this is December. I know, but... <laughs> December's for riding your friends. It's a piggyback ride. Yes. Don't say why. What you you're, think? You're, 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 okay. I man. was implied, and I have a visual. <laughs> That's not helping you as much I as you think it I is. I didn't have complete visual on the photo. <laughs> There's a camera in the way. <laughs> but yes. They were riding so Look other. at that. I mean, <laughs> that is wholesome as F. But yeah, so like... I know, there's the, a lot of leg. There is Have a lot of leg. Have you seen some of these other pictures on here? Like, I don't even... We don't need to do all that. N- no. I, I, You know what? I've grown to love the Chase U calendar just because, like, it's not like the swimsuit calendar that they used to do. It is very much a gag on that concept. Yeah, and everybody's, like, airbrushed so bad. Like, it's not even... Like, how oh, do you can show the, so much skin dude, but not be attractive? Dude, Thea Hale is the most airbrushed human I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> but it's just, she's not the only one. It's just, like, no, that's the one you've seen air, in person, so you know. They're all airbrushed. Like, it's crazy. But, like... You know, you have all these women who are supposedly in the university and now they all hate the university and, and that didn't it felt like wasted. Because they potential. didn't get a piece of this calendar. They all made the calendar specifically to say uh, uh, also my other problem was like the amount of time and I've seen this a lot with the WWE. I don't even know uh, who these are. And Sorry. that's just because maybe it's just because that's the product I like tend to notice storyline beats more with. Yeah. But like they don't leave a lot of room between big moments. Mm-hmm. They didn't leave a lot of time between Chase U is saved and JC Jane turning on Thea Hale. Mm-hmm. Like that is she almost immediately turned on Thea and it was like, well, why did you save the college if you were just gonna do that? What was the point? You wasted your time. Um, I remember when Becky Lynch got her hair cut and then she almost immediately got hurt. And when she came back, she had her long hair again. Mm-hmm. She had extensions, which, okay, no big deal. You're allowed to get extensions. There's nothing wrong with it. But for the sake of the storyline, this was such a big deal that she had short hair now and she had this whole new look and she came back with her old look restored and nobody mentioned it. And that felt strange to me because I was invested in her having this new look and I feel like it didn't get any time to marinate. And not on purpose, you know, she got hurt. She had to go and heal up for a little bit. And but and I was thinking, all right, well, she's going to come back and she's going to have these really cool updos with the short hair now. Mm-hmm. And she's going to like have that cool, badass Seth Rollins like gear. Like mm-hmm. I was so ready for that. And she came back and she was in her man, her the man get up again. But And I'm like, wait. A lot of discussion, direction, I'm sure, kind of conversations happening around there. So, but and again, like, I, I, it has to be maddening to do story for NXT. Like, I, I know it's probably a little different now, and there's probably a little more communication, um, with the different people on top. But, um, sure, think about it six, a year ago, two years ago. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It were, it, people were getting called up left and right. Yeah, so you have to be ready for or like it's it's almost like running an indie show. We're like, well, I got these storylines, but I got to think about who's not going to be here mm-hmm. and what we do next, right? Like, what's going to divert something like that? You know, maybe you hear somebody might be called up in the next month or so, so you just flatten whatever's going on, right? Which is which will lead to like some storylines that are just not going to complete. You know, I feel like maybe the chase you is in a financial rut storyline may have been because they were considering pulling up multiple members of Chase U Mm -hmm. up to the main roster. And so they wanted to have that there to like, well, they're technically locked into a four-year storyline because that's how long their program is supposed to last. Mm -hmm. So how do we get rid of school so that they can come up to the main roster without question? Mm -hmm. And then I guess the higher-ups decided, no, none of them are ready for this. Let's, (laughs) Let's save the school. Also, yeah. I think I think Chase Andre Chase needs to work here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he looks so uncomfortable. Like I feel dude, uncomfortable for every him. Time he has every a match time he does that, eight minutes, I'm like, dude, you need some gear. I'd be bacon, especially with all the NXT lights and everything. Mm-hmm. It's like 
and I don't think he's wearing just like a fake collar underneath that sweater. It's a it's it's a full mm-hmm. get up like, dedication. But is it dedication or is it is it just is it just the lack of? Do you think that's like as bad as like I I I remember seeing CPA sweating. Yes. When he comes out, when he's wearing those oh three shirts yep. already, and he's already a sweaty human. Yeah, <laughs> dude. If you and those look like him, they're wool. I don't know. Dude, he walks around in a t-shirt before the before the show starts, and he's like, he's got like his arm hair is all matted, and oh, he's just a sweaty guy. And he, it's not that he doesn't smell or anything. It's mm-hmm. just, he's just, he just, he's a, a wonderful human. smelling human being. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, some comments here, and we'll move on here real quick. Tina says. Sigh. Okay, NXT tag title is the main event yet again. Are we getting another turn like last week? Uh, Matt True Prince uh, is saying sometimes I wonder if Shawn Michaels books NXT in a way where he has to tell stories fast because of how much turn turnover is coming and in, in that, and out of the show. That's, that's it is exactly like, what I'm saying. I mean, your show is a vehicle. It's <laughs> becoming a product of its own with its own following, but it's also a vehicle to get these people ready for the main show. But it, it, like it's such a double. You, you know, you, you run into the problem where you get your stars over to the point where your overhead looks at them as your your new breed of talent. Mm-hmm. Exactly, roster. exactly. So now um, immediately that you have an, an act that's over, mm-hmm. it's gone. It, it, you have you saw it with 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 Mello and Braun, and with Braun and, mm-hmm. and, and, and with Aunt, um, Ilya Dragunov, mm-hmm. where it's like you had that story of, you know, like Ilya losing the title or, or, or I'm sorry, um, Mello losing the title to Elia because I, I mean the story was that he was probably going to go up mm-hmm. right and then immediately after that you have a story where Elia is forced to leave NXT if he loses his title and it's just like well now we all know what's going to happen yeah yeah like it, it really kind of telegraphs it too I mean we, we always saw that when there were title changes you know back in the day in the, in the Finn days and stuff like that so uh-huh. anyways well we need to get talking about some Dungeons and Dragons here in a moment, but we in the do. meantime, go check out IndieWrestling.us. A lot of great stuff happening over there. Uh, Wednesday, uh, we are premiering the APWF Evolution Show uh, from Indiana, PA. From uh, yeah, that was from late June, yes. Uh, but their next show is coming up here um, on the twenty fourth, so uh, you guys go and check that out. And they'll also let you know you, know, you can kind of get an idea of what those shows are going to be like. Of course, featuring the NWA World Heavyweight Championship EC three against. Um, uh, Bill Collier uh, defending against Bill Collier um, and also there's a Rise Grand Championship match with Cal Poke Paul and Zach Nystrom I believe the first time those those two uh, uh, met uh, there's a Fight Underground Championship match on there between Christian Noir and the Rev Ron Hunt um, there's uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good matches on there a lot of good talent and some talent that we usually don't see in Pittsburgh too as a part of this uh, so a really, it was a really good show I highly recommend it I think uh, Bubba Brewer is doing a great thing out there uh, and you're going to get to see how that first show went um, sound guy aside yes that we left some of that in there because I can't really edit around it. So, but it doesn't matter. Hey, it made it easier for putting on YouTube. I can tell you that. That's going to be for free on the YouTube as well as over on Indie Wrestling Network. Uh, so go check that out starting Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And of course, a lot of other great stuff. Thursday night fights is happening. The uh, Steel City Retro- Retribution, Retribution Show. Retribution Ret- of the Steel City Killers. Yes. Aha. I remembered it. I don't even have it in front of me. That's going to be next Friday live on all, all the streaming platforms at interwrestling.us. Uh, RWA is coming up this month. VCW is coming up on the 1st. Uh, and 2PW here in the beginning of September as well. A lot of stuff happening. It's going to be a packed few weeks here on IndieWrestling.us. A No Ring show is being recorded this Friday. That's going to go up on the network later. Um, and I think a few other things might be in the works too. So a lot of stuff going on. A lot of bang for your buck. It's only a $5.99 seven-day free trial on IndieWrestling.network. And there's also a membership if you like it on the YouTube as well. Um, so you can get that, I think, just through your app or something too. So it's yeah, a lot you easier. Get, you just get it through the yeah. And it gets all the shows, gets the live streams. We yep. we we uh, simulcast to the network and YouTube at the same time. Whatever your preference is, and of course the network has a little bit more of a back catalog uh, and some of the uh, special things that we did here um, as part of the network, which we're looking to bring back some of those back too. And also Top Rope Tabletop is streaming on all those platforms, and of course you two are a part of it. This is Pro Wrestlers 
playing Dungeons and Dragons, and it's been God. This was a COVID project <laughs> that is still going. Yeah, and you're still in campaign two. Well, yeah, for ish. the moment, two for ish, moment. two ish. We're getting there. I well, think we're get, we're getting to the end, right? right? There. So uh, it, it feels like every day that we're building to a possible end. <laughs> so it's like it, we, we look at every every we look at um, each other every day, and we're like. Is, is today we, the day? Are we done? Are we, are we getting? <laughs> are we going to the place? This is well, the campaign that never ends. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> but it, it's getting to the point where we've talked so much about kind of the characters that we're gonna do in our next campaign. Mm -hmm. um, that, we gotta get there. That we have to. We gotta, we gotta get put a pin in this. This is like the Netflix show that you never finish, <laughs> dude. Seriously. Oh my god, yeah. But it's you're like, point. but it's like you keep looking and you're like, we gotta get to the end, and then you, there's mm -hmm. the next season. And you're like, are you kidding me? They stretched this out this far. <laughs> this is the Game of Thrones of campaigns. No, <laughs> but I love it. It's it's super engaging every week. Um, I get mm -hmm. I get to, I, I I get to just exist in a new world, which is really cool mm -hmm. you picked up on it really quick too i think it just made sense mm -hmm. kind of yeah really. it was kind of just like i i don't know you kind of just have to like exit you have to kind of like it is is the mind's playground right yeah so it, it, you have to just kind of like exist somewhere else in your brain to make this game work right mm -hmm. so i mean when you watch along when you watch along i mean you can watch along with the pieces but you also kind of have to have this this brain that you're using in lit when you like listen to like audiobooks and read literature and stuff like that, where you have to kind of imagine yourself in this bigger world than what you live in now, mm -hmm. which is which is really cool of me. Yeah. And I mean, like, we've got our little miniatures of our characters, but ultimately, like, it's up to the audience to kind of visualize what our characters are doing. Mm -hmm. Like, we as the players. We have to describe like the actions that we're taking and how we try to go about it. But like the audience, the goal has to be making the audience so engrossed in what we're doing that they can just imagine the characters doing that without having to really think about it. Mm -hmm. And like our past couple of battles have been like incredibly fun. Oh, yeah. But, but they're very taxing. They are very taxing. <laughs> you like I I I, I sometimes I, like you know, I I try to watch the stream to keep an eye on you. I, I leave the room, let you guys have the room to yourself. Um and 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 like I I like sometimes I miss you when you leave. Oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> <laughs> My, Especially when you do it and I have to leave and go film a no ring show. <laughs> yeah. My my favorite thing has been like when somebody from our because me, Mikey, and Tony all sit on the side of the table that is furthest from the door. Mm -hmm. So we have to go behind Keith to get to the door to like go to the bathroom, fill up our water, whatever. And also there's sometimes where I just don't want to be on camera. <laughs> yeah, but my favorite thing <laughs> I'm is, done with this. I'm walking away from no, the situation. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that, but you know what? You get cooped up. In, yeah. a, in, a, in a place for too yeah. long when you're just like, I need, I just need about 10 to 15 seconds to not be on camera. Mm. Yeah. But my absolute favorite thing is when one of us is like go, getting up to do something and like walks behind Keith and there's just that moment where you forget that there's also a camera pointed directly uh, at directly. Keith. <laughs> Sorry about that. Forgot that. Forgot that was nice. Proceed. I'll fix it in post. <laughs> okay. Uh, but like, there's that moment where you forget for a second that the camera is, there's another camera pointed directly at Keith. So you, you know, you grab a bite of pizza or you take a bite of your taco or you like. Just text, look at my phone. Yeah. yeah. Like text an update to a friend or to a loved one or so something. And uh, I just love like looking at the screen because I'm usually keeping an eyeball on Twitch to like see if anybody's in the chat and I'll mm -hmm. just see them appear in the background just doing their thing it's so funny mm -hmm. or sometimes i'll pop in and just just <laughs> stick my head in there You'll it's like too. it's like if you just turn to like a random camera on on a new york city street it's <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just very jarring when you get caught like I do. and also like i usually leave the window open too so people can see what's happening in here and i don't know maybe people are like walking by and like i don't know like i know people like flip us off when we're doing this show on tuesdays sometimes and, and do weird stuff or put I've their face really on the window i've never really noticed it yeah I, nobody's like knocked on the window during the show or anything not, not, like not while yeah. we've done top rope tabletop i think they they just see six nerds gathered around a table and they're like 
not interested. Like, I so, just don't understand what's happening over just there. It's like, oh, look, nerds. Yeah. And nerds. those people just sitting there well, eating their tacos it, across yeah, the street. Say, and people from Mexican grocery coming over and looking at it and just going, gay? Yeah, I feel like I feel like every now and then they like send somebody over to like, okay, can you go see what the hell they're doing this week? Uh, they're sitting around the table again. That one rolled dice. No, the most eventful thing that happens around here is there will be a uh, a train that stops because of the <laughs> There's a guy who refused. the train's coming back on the first. By the way, it's been it's been it's been oh, down for two months. So really, yeah, they've been working on a lot of the track uh, uh, above them. Well, because us, there'll so. be there'll be a guy doing DoorDash or Uber Eats <laughs> that that just parks way too far out into the street, and it blocks because the street runs parallel with the with the tram tracks. Mm-hmm. And this is the only. I mean, the, the tracks are on the street. This is the only mile of a street in Pittsburgh with active rail. On the street streetcar with, with the T system I here. Hate it. Not quite. It's the you. It is the only mile. It is not the only active road with an active streetcar going through it. Uh, right. Crossing or with. Going toward with. Because like mm, okay. Wor- Worthington's not active anymore. Or not Worthington. Um, Cro- uh, yeah, it was, I think it was Worthington uh, up Allentown area. The one I'm thinking of runs along runs with traffic for about I want to say fifty feet. So it's not. <laughs> 50 feet. <laughs> 50 feet is nothing. <laughs> well, once you said like running with traffic, I was like, okay, I get, like, okay, you're on right. On the street, like th- you can't pass the train. <laughs> it's when a, when a train needs to um, um, observe a street traffic light. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay. This one, see, it still doesn't. Uh, Which one are you thinking? So it's down. Uh, there's. The Castle Shannon Shops, which is right behind the Ice Castle, which leads to Mount Lebanon Boulevard. Oh, that's a crossing. That's what I. That's yeah, why I was saying because, uh, but that's why. Uh, that's why I just stopped you to say then. Well, it still doesn't count because that one does occasionally stop for the traffic light to let traffic yeah, pass. Yeah, it's, it's part. It's part of that, but yeah. it's, it's more a crossing than anything. Yeah. But, yeah. but like you see, why I was starting to say, yeah. ah, wait, but no, you're right. I'm talking. To, I don't have honest to, slow to down goodness, for it, you know? street mm. car. That's a problem. Oh, and there goes the uh, emergency vehicles. Yep, emergency there you vehicles. go. <laughs> Somebody's on fire, I guess. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That's uh, your first thought when you see an emergency vehicle? Well, it was a fire <laughs> truck, <laughs> Mikey. I'm like, it was a fire I'm like, truck. I'm like, I hope everybody's going to be okay. And she's like, somebody's <laughs> on fire. Yeah. Somebody is I'm fully, learning so much about you right now. Fully engulfed in flames. <laughs> Surprisingly, the flower girl is a pyromaniac. And, and mm. nobody saw that coming. Mm. Ashy, ashy flowers. I don't know what that does. Anyways, Moist back to Dungeons and Dragons. So, uh, for those that don't know, so what are your current characters when you uh, uh, are in this D and D world? I play a bard called Prim- uh, Primus. Okay. And, uh, he's. I have not heard much singing from you. No, he's not a he's not a traditional bard in the sense where where um like he's a quiet bard. <laughs> well, so like the backstory to my character is that his, his dad was an Elvis impersonator, mm-hmm. right? So he kind of. Well, I mean, like the D and D version of Elvis, right? right? I remember this. Yeah. Okay. So, like, he's just been kind of like home ridden, or like, like a basement dweller, essentially, living off of his dad's like Elvis impersonator career, right? So, I've just been kind of like living in my hometown until some unforeseen uh, things happen, where you know, like, there's a bad guy running around my town killing everybody and then i'm the only one left so i have to find some refuse mm-hmm. and i run into uh how many were there four other yeah four yeah four other guys in a in a haunted house it looked like yeah we found you in a haunted house no i found you in a haunted house um, tomato tomato <laughs> <laughs> We found each other. We were all running away from things. I've, it turns I've, out they had adopted me. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, hey. Maybe the house was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and Tatiana, what are you playing right now? Oh, boy. So I was playing an Owlin uh, cleric. Uh, an Owlin who was both a rogue and a cleric named Drew. Mm-hmm. However, at the beginning. her body, though. Well, I was getting to that. At the beginning of our previous episode, Drew performed a very dangerous spell that was way beyond her capabilities. And there was a lot of things that could have gone wrong during the spell. The main thing that they needed to go right went right. They brought back a dragon. Spoilers. 
Uh, however, there was a side effect and Drew's body got ripped out of her, or sorry, Drew's soul got ripped out of her body and thrust into her soul, which her sword, which already had a sword, soul in it. I am having trouble with words now because it gets very convoluted. And uh, somebody else's soul was Perfect thrown into Drew's. And, dragons. <laughs> and uh, we'll get... Uh, another soul was thrown into Drew's body. So now I am playing Drew's twin sister, Leia. And very, very in character, my dice decided to absolutely fail me during Leia's first battle with the team. I just kept rolling like, and I, you saw, I kept changing the dice out, trying to find one that would roll well. And then it would just roll a two or a one or a three. And I'm like, I need this battle to go well, because if she dies, I don't know what's going to happen to my beloved owl. <laughs> See, I think, I, I think a dice switch is kind of like the same in the same vein of like a ball switch in bowling where it's kind of just like a mental psych out game as a former junior year league bowler. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is you know, if you just I keep mean, switching balls, you're never going to get I'll into say, a you know, in bowling. There's actually like, oh, I'll go with a heavy one or something like that. Right. Like, I don't know if there's any physical like, like versus. Uh, Everybody looks at it different. Um, the way I look at it is I, I feel more confident if I just have a new piece of dice in my hand to mm -hmm. roll. Mm -hmm. I always roll about four dice before. I always roll 4d20 before the session even starts. Mm -hmm. And I take the two highest rolling ones. The second highest is the backup dice. The highest is the main dice for the game. So if the first dice starts rolling ones and twos, that goes back in the bag. Backup dice I love one. this process. <laughs> oh, listen. Wait, 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 wait. So <laughs> this is like a superstitious process. Do you guys have like, and, and, and you know, like with sports and stuff? I remember this. Like, like there'll be certain sequences I do when I was when I was bowling, right? Um, like with my hands and stuff. Like when you guys go into the wrestling matches, are there like some kind of like routine superstitious things that you guys do yeah. going into that? Every, if you notice, every one of my matches, I enter the ring like uh, Cassius Ono. I get into the, I get through the corner, and then I hop over. Hook myself and do yeah. a front flip over. Yeah, I do that every time. I, I ev, I've, ev, every single match I've ever done. I've like done this that. needs to happen for this match to happen. Can kind of vibe, right? It? Huh? Huh? Like like that needs to happen for this match to happen for yeah, you, right? For sure. <laughs> I have yet. I probably should because I'm almost five years into this, but I haven't found anything permanent that I kind of do when entering the ring. My routine though is I call the mat. When, uh, this is what for when I'm calling the matches is I walk in circles mm -hmm. and sort of uh, mimic the moves that are going to be done. Mm -hmm. And it looks you do, you do a walkthrough basically, right? Yeah. 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 I walk through it and I mimic it and I do the hand gestures and I like, you know, pretend to get hit and da da da. -da. And it's, it's, to some people, it looks a little crazy. Some people realize what I'm doing. Other people are joke. Or Dude, other um, people like try to jump in. I've had people watch me do that and they try to jump in and like try to like chain wrestle with me or like try to call stuff to me. And I'm just, I, I get into the zone. So I suddenly break out of the zone, look at them like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no, sorry. I was, I was going over it. Sorry. No, mm -hmm. there's one person show. I'm sorry. No, we was, um, I was wrestling SummerSlam weekend, uh, downtown Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I was a block away. I couldn't find. I didn't. I couldn't figure out where you guys were. <laughs> uh, we were on. Uh, yeah, you were like the street over. I found out said, later. It yeah. was. Right, it was right when you got off at the exit. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, I walked in the wrong way. The our locker room was this like nightclub. I mm -hmm. uh, can't remember what it was called, but there were just like bottle girls like walking around and like people like getting drinks, and I'm like in the middle of the dance floor just going like. Doing the moves, doing the moves. <laughs> yeah, like basically pantomiming the whole match. Literally yeah. pantomiming mm -hmm. the whole match. And yeah. to anybody else who's not in the wrestling business, it just looks like it, it just looks like the the mimicry of, mm -hmm. a, of a crazy person outside of a giant eagle, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I think that's always like I, I will I, I've said before, I'm always I'm fascinated. I love watching you guys go through a match together, mm -hmm. you know, like it was a tag team match four people like standing around and I'm just watch them kind of go through the process. Right. Um, because you know, that is like, I don't understand the science of it, uh, the, of putting that together, how that works. And, and, or, and even watching you guys, like I, I, you're not the only people I've seen do that, like that kind of pantomiming kind oh, of thing yeah. to yourself. So, um, so th th that's very interesting. So tell me about the connection, you know, 
um, you know, I always had this like I, I felt like wrestlers because um, you already are doing character work and and presentation and, and, and promos and things like that. It, it always seemed like it kind of connected with, you know, what happens with D&D as far as like those characters in that world building kind of situation. Like do you guys find kind of like a, an easy uh, uh, connection across from your, you know, between does one help the other? Did D and D previously help you get in wrestling, or you know, w- w- would that work? So D and D, I did try to try to use D and D as like a vehicle to like uh, reimagine myself gimmick wise mm-hmm. several years back, and it just for me it just didn't work out because my characters are so fantastical and out of this world and magical specifically mm-hmm. that there's no real easy way for me to translate them into real life and even my more combat characters like i have a monk who i love very much and she'd be she'd make a pretty cool wrestling character but i cannot do her moves physically Mm -hmm. i do not have that capability so that kind of throws a wrench into it what it did help with though was quick thinking when it comes to like just sort of improving in the ring with people Mm -hmm. um just kind of like thinking on my feet and it helped it helped me get rid of that deer in the headlights bit that you have when you're really new in the business and like something goes wrong and or you just forget something like champa on friday yeah i mean it's still gonna happen every yes. now and then it's gonna happen, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like it just want playing D m- more as often as I was going to wrestling practice, I'd have those matches and I'd have moments where like something would go wrong and I would just kind of keep moving and going, okay, well that rolled, that didn't roll the way I wanted it to. Let's try this and go to it. Um, and I, I find it easier on the opposite end mm-hmm. where it's like, I think pro wrestling helped me in D and D more than D and D helped me in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly it, yeah, it does come down to quick thinking really. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, pro wrestling exists in the same way um, that D&D does kind of in the Lions Playground, where it's like I can envision a whole pro wrestling match in my head, mm-hmm. like move for move. You gotta, like, like when I pantomiming, it, it, it's not I'm just it, I'm not just pantomiming. I'm envisioning the whole match in my head mm-hmm. where my positioning, you know, like am I corner to corner? Am I rope to rope? How many steps am I from in the middle? Where do I have to be for this, that, this, you know, like, so I guess it really does kind of help in D and D positioning as well. Cause it's like, I can figure out where I am in a space and not have to like, think about it too hard. Um, and also, and, uh, just like with wrestling is, is just a lot of improv too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, when you're doing a promo, it's like, if you're not in WWE, it's not just scripted right so you kind of have to figure out what your character that's the only place that is scripted <laughs> yeah. well i don't know how much AEW is scripted i don't think a whole lot but um but yeah i think it just helps kind of just the, the quick thinking of it you know being able to uh think about uh what your character's wants needs mm-hmm. are or- uh, is easily translatable to pro wrestling in D. And you could even make the argument that like when we're having those battles, like while everybody else is having their turn, we're kind of thinking of the spot that we want to do. Exactly. No, that's exactly what it is. It's it's almost like ha- um, playing D and D is almost like calling a scramble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like that. Yeah, no, it really wow. is because it's just a lot of it's a lot of sitting and listening mm-hmm. um, to the structure that other people want it to be. And just adding in your pizzazz and mm. and what you think the situation calls for. And then when somebody gets eliminated before you get to do your thing with them, that's their that's the real life yeah. situation of they went down to zero HP. No, that's that's the worst part of D and D and the six man scramble match <laughs> is when it's all said and done, and you look at somebody that you really wanted to wrestle or like talk to mm-hmm. for the for however long, and you're like, we didn't get to interact that whole time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Dang. <laughs> Next time. The disappointment of scrambles in D and D. No, I mean, I, I, I would say that it, it, it's like there's so many like it, it always plays out different. Yeah. D- and like, you're talking about there's like so many possibilities and where it ends up, and you realize, oh, but we didn't do this, this, and this for mm-hmm. sure so, because it just yeah. didn't because we had it didn't come out that way. Yeah. No. It's yeah. like because there'll be times when it's like, oh, you know, I thought about doing this, this, and this, 
but it just it's, didn't it's, play out that it's, way. It's it's a it's a it, we just did a music event here on Friday, so it's in my head. But it, it's like a jam session, sure, yeah. to a certain point, especially when you get to that kind of uh, mass thing, like a scramble, right? So. Uh, anyways, you guys are top rope table. Top is, uh, again, that's going to be here in the studio, right over there. Mm-hmm. We're going to set up the table, all the lights and everything uh, over in the corner. Uh, not the corner, but you basically take up half a room. Uh, but <laughs> it's a good amount of the room. A little good amount of the room. The nice table that Justin and I will put, it to, put together. We got um, to make table. room for our muscles. That's, what's that? We got to make room for our muscles. <laughs> yes, make room for the muscles. Absolutely. Um, and of course, uh, we'll, we'll be still talking with you guys here after the break. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, all that stuff is there. If you want to check something out, I think it's I think it's kind of the kind of thing you could put in the background while you're working or something, right? Yes. Uh, and to catch up on it. All that's on YouTube. It's on Indie Wrestling Network, and uh, you guys can uh, kind of catch up to what's going on and see the evolution of it too over the oh, years sure. too. It yeah. looked a lot different when we started that's for sure dude see me go from long hair to short hair to long yeah hair, yeah. yeah just like, we could yeah you could do a whole like sequence you know since it's like m- mostly month to month i watch everybody age over the last four years <laughs> no 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 don't do that no watch everybody grow up and uh you can watch the awkward early episodes when covid was happening and we were all in the same room and we sat everybody in a corner oh yeah yeah remember that we're just like how do we do this uh we're gonna be right back we're gonna take a quick break and but first up speaking of top rope tabletop uh keith hot is gonna give you a uh look back to how um where how we got here at top rope tabletop and the story so far so you can get caught up for joining everybody on friday it's gonna be 7 p.m is the start of the stream more or less Indie standard, uh, indie wrestling standard time, and uh, and you guys can tune in there through the night, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Dungeon Master Bearcat Keith Odd here, and previously on Top Rope Tabletop, Shadow Claw has made their way into the city of Shadow with the help of all the friends they've met along the way, including two very strong dragons. They fought their way to the core and have seen many friends and family members in the pods of stasis locked in place in time. This will probably be the final list of the season as they have their last encounter with the Shadow Lord. The fate of the realms hangs in the balance. Tune in on Friday to see what happens. See you soon. Let's 
I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gang. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. You must break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to a gay and his NB on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Dungeon Master Bearcat Keyfod here, and previously on Top Rope Tabletop, Shadowclaw has made their way into the City of Shadow. With the help of all the friends they've met along the way, including two very strong dragons, they fought their way to the core and have seen many friends and family members in the pods of stasis, locked in place in time. This will probably be the final of of the season as they have their last encounter with the Shadow Lord. The fate of the realms hangs in the balance. Tune in on Friday to see what happens. See you soon. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We got the Unwielding Chantiana. And we got Mike McGovern. What are you doing? What is this? Jazz hands? Jazz yeah, hands. Jazz, jazz hands. hands. Todd, wow. Doing Hold it, on. So I guess I, I got to do it too. Both hands? Both hands? Yes. Both everybody hands. show their Or is this an everybody show their hands? Ugh. Is it one of those things? I don't know what's happening. What quantifies as jazz hands? Uh, okay. And what quantifies All right, chat room. Show your hands. Okay. So actually, Take jazz, your hand hand, if you're driving. jazz hands are having your hands open with your fingers completely spread to the best of your ability, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, and just wiggling your hands. It's gives the impression of having pom-poms. So wait, what is what is this? Does this have another wait, that? that I believe is you you're just turning your you're just turning your wrist at that point. So Forget about it. That's actually that is I'm pretty sure uh when you slow it down and just do it like one or two times, I'm pretty sure that is some that is a word in ASL, I'm not 100% certain, but whenever you're doing it like is that it a dirty just, word? No. It's not. I'm pretty sure it's like, what? <laughs> uh, but whenever you're doing it like that, just all over the place, I'm pretty sure that's Russian. Oh. That's a, that, I'm pretty sure that's a Russian thing. Russian but. ASL. <laughs> <laughs> that would be R-A-S-L. No, no, no. Russian ASL is literally just... Go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <an> eagle. Yes. <laughs> Russian oh. eagle. Oh, and vodka. Well, I'm, I can't find oh. my uh, I can't find my charger for my laptop, so we might lose some of the chat room soon. But I still oh, got no. Facebook. Oh no! But anyways, that's fine. It's fine. It's there's it's fine. I don't think I have to do anything over here. Anyways, um, oh, I wanted to talk about um, Tatiana. I, I you you've had your injury, um, yes. but you've been still filling your time with doing some stuff. Uh, you've been doing commentary lately, yes. for instance. Uh, how has that been going? Well. It's it's been fun. Um, talking on the microphone has always been one of my strengths. Mm-hmm. Uh, so getting to sort of do commentary all the time and work on it and like kind of find what works for me and what doesn't, it's been fun. Um, I wasn't there last week because I uh, just I couldn't I couldn't be near a locker room with Nick's Wild for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, they are such a scamp right now. That's a word for them. <laughs> yes, uh, but no, it's got like the NWO like trash throw. Uh, uh, when 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 they when when it went down with Reese at the last Friday show, it was in it was terrible, but it was incredible at the same time. I'm I'm actually a little impressed. Mm-hmm. Like. 
I I know I was absolutely flabbergasted by the whole thing, mm. but like seeing that reaction from the fans, because obviously they've thrown trash before. <laughs> Some, uh, sometimes in positivity. Sometimes. Um, but yeah, just, just seeing it happen in real time, just as a reaction, was wild. Mm-hmm. I'm a little impressed. No pun intended. Ah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that do, you have anything, do you have anything big planned other than obviously yeah. um, not being missing anymore <laughs> when you come back? Oh my God. Well, yeah, I have a whole list of people that like I need to uh, have conversations with, let's mm-hmm. say. Um, oh, God, do you more ever, promo do, time. Do you want to do com- uh, commentary more? I do. I, I mm. kind of enjoy doing commentary. I'd like to do it more places and work with other folks that are a little bit more experienced at it. Sweet. It's kind of something I want to do after I'm done in the ring. Too. Sure. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, it, you know, what, what was it? I was, uh, I made a post, a fun post with somebody about diversifying because they were doing something else weird. I, I was on the story last week. Um, but really like, it, you know, it, it you know, I, I don't know how many people like kind of help with, with booking and, and, you know, I know we have some, some of the, um, uh, uh, old timers. I don't want really to call them old timers. I feel disrespectful saying vets. that. <laughs> what the, what the vets, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Old timers. Don't, don't let Paul Christ. Atlas hear this clip. Uh, <laughs> cause that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, but no, like backstage, like kind of doing that kind of agent kind of, uh, uh, process. I mean, you know, it, it is kind of good to like kind of have a, another reason to be booked. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that, or even like almost, I want to say double duty, but you know, it, it, it adds more value to be, be being uh, booked on a show at that point. Right. Sure. Abs- absolutely. Or more opportunity, hopefully. So M- Mikey, you probably, I don't know if you saw this, but you might have heard about it. Uh, there was a post that went on Facebook a couple of days ago. Of oh, you mean a site for 15 old people? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, for, for like me and Paul Atlas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, pretty uh, much. For the old timers, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, a couple a couple of uh, TNA executives were saying, hey, if you guys like want an opportunity to work Ring Crew. Oh, the Bound for Glory post? Mm-hmm. I saw that, oh, yeah. Okay. And I, I sent them an email, and I, of course, attached my resume. But I also attached my uh, my shoot life resume and included in the email i also have a lot of experience in the theater working as a stagehand Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so from the jump i'm just telling them i'm the person you want to give this opportunity to because i'm actually going to like be useful Mm -hmm. at least that's my hope and Whoever they, they, they choose. Like seeing some of the posts, you don't know how many of them were like, I, I can't I wrestle for you? You know, like, and that's like that. It's like, I'm a wrestler. You should hire me. You know, and then you get nothing else. Oh, so, yeah. and I'm sure even TNA would get that from yeah. some people that just, you know, don't know how to kind of put themselves out there. Right. So, no, that, that thing, that's good. You know, and then, and yeah, you, you know, I mean, I mean, look how many have kind of slid in that role. Um, Drama King, I can't remember his name, Matthew, uh, Rangwall. I've worked with him several times and I still, I don't want to say his name to his face because I know I get it wrong his, every time. Uh, his NXT name was Aiden English. Aiden English. Thank you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can, I can do with that. Um, but, um, but yeah, like, I mean, look at him, like moving into a position like that, you know, Veda, Veda is doing some amazing stuff and is everywhere. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's, I'm surprised when I see her actually wrestle at this point, you know, <laughs> My, oh, yeah, cause she's doing commentary everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah everybody like, wants her to do. She's commentary. always at the new Japan shows. Mm-hmm. You know, she's been doing enjoy obviously. And just like, she has a great job at enjoy. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's great stuff. I, I got to work with her, um, at warrior several times and then new Japan, um, you know, and it's great to see her growing and getting in front of more people and everything. Um, I think I've, I think I've worked with Veda every time that she's been at enjoy because mm-hmm. I wrestled, I wrestled, uh, with her. Oh, I guess not. No, I guess there must've been one time that I, that I didn't, but like pretty much every time that she's worked at enjoy, she's either been in my match or my commentator, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is really cool. Uh, so you've been on both sides of it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fun. Well, I know uh, uh, Gia Miller, who's now the official backstage interview for TNA. Mm-hmm. I remember chatting with her back when she was like freshly a, mem- a, new, a member mm-hmm. of TNA. Mm-hmm. And that started up because she became friends with Madison Rain, and Madison Rain was like, "You know what? You've got a good face. You're a good mm-hmm. talker. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's try you out on this." And it took off. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's been interesting to see. Like, I, I know some of the, some of the girls. You know, yeah, it, it's they've been kind of sliding these. Different, and uh, what's her face? Um, 
Quinn Quinn McKay was at yeah. her name. Yes. Yes. Is that's... now she's the NXT um, backstage. She was doing Ring of Honor before too, mm-hmm. um, and she was a great wrestler too. So like you know she was no slash in that. But like but it's also like you know uh, I was listening to Adam Pierce talk about his position and talking how like. You know, he's there. He's a former NWA champ. And now uh, Nick Aldis is there as the other commissioner. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, so we're, so we're setting up for a match here, right? You know, <laughs> like, like, like this is happening. Like, like Triple H is just collecting the old, old, all the old NWA champs at this point. Uh, you know, and putting them backstage. Wouldn't that be great? Wait, I know, that right? That would be really if cool. If they just get real ticked off. But, dude, that's a mania match. For sure. <laughs> and there's been a few like at the pay-per-views when they do the face-to-face thing every once in a while and they're kind of joshing. Like you're just like, oh, they're, sure, they're, they're gonna do something, sure, right? They're joshing, but they're I they wanna do something. You can tell they want to do something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just like he's just like, oh, you know, if it's presented to me, I'm 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 up for it, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> when in this interview that's I saw a, yeah, this week, what, right? That's what you say when you want to do something real bad, but you don't want to say it out loud. Yeah, I just oh, like yeah. I don't want to say it out loud. It's like, well, oh, I'm open to the I'm open to the the proposal he was like I, I think I, I think I heard uh, Nigel say the same thing on, just two, on an interview this week I could just when I see those two in a match I just imagine them just beating the dog shit <laughs> oh absolutely just just going out I, I imagine that neither one of them comes out with full gear on what? just just yeah. sh- just shooters <laughs> knee pads maybe some tape and just coming out just an old school brawler like I want just like a uh, Harley Race Texas Deathmatch kind of no, thing. No, that's down. what it would be right? too. Just two men with taped up knuckles just <laughs> going out there and dusting each other, just giving each other a couple. Of dust. And the thing is, like most people that watch WWE see these two guys, and they have zero. These, these guys, like maybe they've jobbed for WWE in the last twenty years, right? Don't know the history of the NWA championship, uh, uh, history with Ring of Honor, history with TNA, you know, because bo- both of them have, you know, some level of thing. Right. You know, I remember seeing clips of Adam Pierce's like feud with Colt Cabana over the NWA championship well, across like, the I Indies. feel like some, a lot of people don't remember that Nick Aldis was like the NWA championship when All In was the biggest independent right. professional wrestling mm-hmm. yes. pay-per-view of all time. Yes. When that, he was in the first All In, he he lost to Cody Rhodes for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Mm-hmm. Hell, that could be something. He, he gets in Cody's face and they really love those days, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so yeah. many possibilities. and it's all, I know it has to be in the right spot and when it's going to matter the most and everything like that. But, but your regular WWE person that doesn't know that and then these guys get into it and maybe do like you said. And just, it just blows their mind. Or it's just a, or it's just a draft that goes... Because when do they do the draft? Is it after Mania? Or it's when whenever they, they want at this point, I Cause, think. Because think about it. You do the draft mid-year and they and they just F each other over. Yes, right? yes. They completely F each other over in the draft. And then you do something where... They'll probably do it going into the Netflix deal or something, right? Some, yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. And then yeah. and then you have like you have all this be like the heel. Mm-hmm. You have be the real heel. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he does something dirty behind Pierce's back. Maybe he tries to like steal a talent mm-hmm. or something. And maybe he tries to go to Triple H. He's like, he's going out of line. He's going behind my back. And, you know, and, and maybe it's like, all this is like already in the room with Triple H. Like, oh, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're trying to go behind my back, you son of a bitch. Blah, 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 blah. And it, all of a sudden, it's just like, Nick, all this feels like nothing's going on. And then just one day out of nowhere on a SmackDown, he just comes in and just, boom. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you get. Get suspended I'm... for three weeks. No, no, no. I'm going to come in and shake your hand. I'm going to shake your hand. Spits on him. And just start brawling, brawling, brawling. No, we're going to save it for Mania. We're going to save it for Mania. <laughs> I, I can't remember oh, the last no, time people have been invested now. in the in the authority figures like this because like I'm seeing like like there was or the, it's or it's the slot you give them the time or it's like you know the loser gets the Monday nights the winner gets <laughs> the winner the winner gets the Monday night slot in three hours or or the winner gets the three hours <laughs> Rock, and that's how USA moves back down to three hours I was. I was watching the promo for the debut because it's like September, like what is the sixth, seventh, or fifth, or whatever, uh, that they're coming to USA. And I was like, oh my God, when are they going to announce that smack? That's going to be three hours. I feel like they're going to do it because USA is the reason they've been going three hours, right? On Mondays. Why wouldn't they do it on Fridays, right? They would, they would for sure. Because what are they running after SmackDown on Fridays? <laughs> like, fucking 
burn notice. Like, I, yeah, I don't even know what's on USA. I, I mean, it's some terrible. I, I know after Raw is always it's some, a rerun of Suits. It's, like, it's, what are it's they always doing? it's always a rerun of some terrible cop show that your mom likes watching. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's like ones I don't know. It's not even Law and Order anymore. Before it. And it's just like, it, you know, it, I just I, I just know whenever I turn on the DVR and it's going into Raw, I was like, and that's how I dealt with my rape. I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> it's like, it's what always, is, it's always I'm just here for special. wrestling. Yep. I know. Why is that always the lead into then? The worst thing now, was when, it was like, I remember. Forever. <laughs> NCIS. I just remember one of the main characters got straight shot in the head and they showed it. And we can't say shit on Raw. Oh <laughs> you're just God. like, are you fucking kidding me? You're going into TV PG Raw, and this 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 woman got shot in the head, and you fucking showed it at 7:58 p.m. at night. Yep, and that's that. What now we're going into. But you better chill out for John Cena is not going to say nuts anymore. <laughs> just, I mean, what are we fucking doing here? This that I don't. Um, I don't know. Listen, I don't get it. I don't get it. There, someday we will have a discussion about. Oh, the... guess what comes on after? <laughs> guess <laughs> oh, guess no. what comes on after oh, Raw? No. Oh no! It's what? another four hours of Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Well, hold on one second because the show just froze. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the stream just froze. Patreon, you still got a show right now, and and there it goes. Oh my God! We got a blue screen of death. <gasps> We got a blue screen death on the wrestling oh, no. mayhem show. Oh no, we're gonna That's... we're going to we uh, it. get it going. We broke uh, the show. Oh no, we're not invited What's back. <laughs> we're not. Did we have a, this. This has not happened for like years on, live on the show like this. Did um, I break it because I went too close to the microphone? I really hope I didn't. <laughs> it's because we were eating pizza earlier. Yeah, that was it. The we're, grease got into the computer. Fine. That's uh, it's for my hand. Oh, because. Fun fact, I broke the second metacarpal, which directly... Metatarsal or metacarpal? Metacarpal, oh. which directly <clears throat> affects your index finger. Ooh. So that's where most of the rehab has been subjected. So, hi, Patreon. I hope you're watching on Patreon. And that sucks. And... <laughs> I'm sorry, Sorg. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We're going to come back. Uh, we'll probably come back, do what we learned, and then uh, and go then from there. Take it home. <laughs> <laughs> then take it home. I just realized we forgot to talk about the mixed tag thing. Mm. The mix. Oh, that's yeah. for Patreon now. <laughs> we you, can, know, I, I, you can bring it up in a while. We learned. We can look at um, here. Let's look at. Um, let me see what the ratings were for the mixed tag challenge. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. The fucking Charlie Dempsey's group now has Rin St. Clair, formerly known as Maddie Rinkowski. Mm. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never met her. I never like saw. A lot. I I never. I almost never saw her advertise for matches, but she got signed, mm -hmm. and she's okay in the ring. She was on Dark a lot, huh? So I mean, Ring of Honor is basically dark, but with more purpose. I didn't see her there either. Uh, but, a Ring of Honor. Yeah. No, I'm just saying generally now it's uh, that's yeah. Right. Like I miss Dark for what it was. I appreciate. Like I pay the ten bucks a month for a Ring of Honor. There's so many. There's so many wrestlers that were on Dark like all of the time back in like mm -hmm. deep in early COVID era. That like just I never see them anywhere anymore. Like mm. the other girl from Dormont, Skylar Moore. Oh yeah. I follow her because again we. Went I remember to, we talked about it when she popped on. You're like I know her. Cause yeah, because we, we, we went, went to, to high school together. Yeah. We went to high school together. She graduated the year before me, so I like follow her on Instagram, and she's always posting about like her day to day life, which mm -hmm. that's great. But like I never see her post about wrestling, mm -hmm. ever. The latest thing she did that she advertised on her social media page was being at a con. For like, which was basically a giant meet and greet event for mm -hmm. wrestlers. There wasn't like any wrestling on it, so I'm not sure if she's taking a break or if she doesn't want to do it anymore. Either so of which I, is fine. I, I really feel like um, I, I feel like there's this, again just kind of thinking about the way I'm thinking about things in you know the last few years. I think there's something that happens when, and you guys are young and curious, so watch out for this. Oh, great. Windows did an update. Of course That's it what did. happened. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, this is why when I do wrestling shows, we don't run the stream through the computer like this. Mm. But I do it in studio because 
We're in studio. That's fine. And they got mostly managed. I got viewership um, numbers, though. Well, good. We'll, yeah, get to, good. we'll get to that then. Um, but I think there's something that happens where you're like, okay, I'm doing, I'm going to go doing good. Okay. I got this shot. Okay. I'm on TV or, you know, I'm at AEW. Right. And then it's like, and then nothing happens out of that. Like that's a fucking mind job. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I've, and you know, I'm familiar with that. I'm just like, Hey, I've seen this, this, and this, and now I'm doing this, you know? And you're like, shit, am I done? Yeah. You know, and that's a, and I've seen that happen to a lot of guys that I've known for a while in the business and everything. So, hi, we're back on the stream allegedly. Hello, stream. Right? hello, stream. Um, we had a crash. We crashed. Mikey broke the system. I didn't. Allegedly, it's because of the four hours of Law and Order. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about Law and Order, and I was this close to making a La Femme Nikita Pacific Blue joke. Olivia uh, Olivia Benson is about to make the big break in the case, but we still have 25 minutes left in the episode. That's so right. Something needs to go. Something That's needs right. to go wrong. Something arrest, needs to break. So they arrested the wrong man. Is what you're saying? Yes, they arrested, exactly. I don't know where we <laughs> left off. I don't know where you're at. I should probably hit record on we the computer on this we, thing we, again. We were we were talking. Well, first we were talking about. Adam Pearson, the the idea <laughs> we got that part in the can. Oh, yeah, I we, know were, that. we were we were talking about how like uh, the USA doesn't have a lot of dissonance when it comes to like putting episodes before PG content because mm -hmm. you were talking about the episode of NCIS where mm -hmm. Agent A Kate Todd dies. And oh wow! She, oh, somebody knows the lore. I love. I we got a visual chat room and somebody just popped in the visual chat room. <laughs> I love this. Listen, listen. Somebody had to live with her folks for a little bit longer than she wanted to and somebody's mother is a little bit too obsessed with a lot of those cop shows listen, that i listen, really don't like. i've been to the in-laws where the only thing on the television the entire weekend was the ncis marathon oh god you're poor oh, i'm mm. so sorry and there was like nothing else to do I'm so and it was sorry. like oh okay here we go okay so like well, it's like but here's the like you you crap on it but you know like after the third episode you're like Man, that crash! I mean, I was kind of invested, but you know, but also when you're, when you're like, man, they really got to crash that. <laughs> they really got to crash that like, crack dealer, huh? I was like, wait, this is like the Navy, like special investigative. Like, there's a lot of shit going on in the Navy, and they got a lot of latitude for this case right here. Like, okay. I don't like, I don't know how the law works, but this doesn't seem right. I will, I will give NCIS a little bit of credit. <laughs> First off, their first couple of seasons were actually pretty decent and engaging content. Uh, it's just it jumped the shark about six times so far, and I think it, it's time. Have, have it's you ever been... watched something about a, a, a investigative government entity with somebody from said government entity before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no. I, okay let me put it this way okay as a wrestler have you watched a movie representing wrestling and just yelled at the television yes. on the screen okay now imagine you're uh, uh, a CIA agent FBI army veteran and then you watch something and you're just like that's not how it fucking but, works wait 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 imagine you're a secret government agent watching that kind of content with your family and your family doesn't know <laughs> okay, that could be wild too yeah, that'd be yeah. so funny I, I, and you're just like wow that's totally how it works <laughs> it's just like oh they did such good research they on this. They never figure that out, you know. And internally, they're just like, ah! But, uh, but screaming. yeah, so the first couple of seasons are pretty good. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I will give NS NCIS credit for, they made the Navy seem cool. <laughs> Wait, is the Navy not cool? No, I have a friend in the, the Navy. Navy. When has the Navy have ever been cool? <laughs> <laughs> the Navy is like the one. Is like the one Everybody rides our, uh, our Our friend hanging out in the Zoom call that's in timeout is holding up. Is, are those the NCIS yeah, box is. sets right over right there? Are you seeing this over yes, here? Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, hold up your name. I see. Uh, what is that? Five NCS box sets? I mean, yeah. I can't. Listen, I that's can't fine. I, feel, I think you just get a medal from the Navy if you watch that one, John C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get accommodation. You know, you get a pension. I had to watch that one. I mean, you I. Get a, I you, get a, you get a place up, you get a place up at the port. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, like, here's the thing. My, my dad's dad was in the Navy, so, like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to actually crap on it. But what I will say is the reason I say that is because on TikTok, anytime anything militaristic pops up, there's always a dunk thrown at the Navy. Yeah, always a dunk at the Navy. Like, mm. like uh, uh, Marines occasionally usually also get a dunk too but like if it's just one branch of the military getting dunked on it's, it's the, the navy. navy oh no uh we have a military member in the oh, chat no. room by the way uh 
That's good. We got him engaging. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tina always reminds us if we if we talk military and corrects us. So uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know if I'm in the right chat room. I don't know. Look, there's about twenty plus years of lore of NCIS. Ouch, y'all. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. Um, we uh, ta- moving on to wrestling. <laughs> Before we offend more, Iron Force is better. Thank you for your service, no matter where you were at, by the way. <laughs> like, seriously, though. Um, but uh so uh where were we at with things uh you know what i'm going to do an ad before we break the the uh, computer again by the way it seemed to be a windows update we had a blue screen of death if you guys are just joining us back on the stream as we uh re- re- i got a lot of work to do to fix these shows now so this is going to be a lot of fun tonight um but anyways thank you to and that's okay if i'm staying up because i will be well fed because of our friends at slice on broadway new york city style yins are made you heard the asmr crunching earlier this evening uh right here the original right up the track here in Beachview, and of course, if you're going, I just saw the post. Taco Mania is returning September 1st with our friends at Enjoy Wrestling, and there's a slice on Broadway right there. If you're not in the taco mood, East End, North Hills, up in Wexford, I heard. I think it's right down the street, maybe from um, our, our friends at Punch King at uh, uh, Victor Benjamin was on a few weeks ago talking about. I don't know that's going to help with your workout, but uh, mm-hmm. there's that. I know Tuesdays are really bad for my uh, uh, well, a weight plan, uh, but anyways, it's worthwhile. It's good stuff, uh, and thank you so much for those guys for supporting uh podcast pissing podcast thank you for supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza it's been a while it's been a long night let's find out what you learned from wrestling this week we do have in our chat room oh no i hope i still have it is this the same one i think i lost the original chat room so please repost your what you learned i knew somebody put one in there earlier so um do you guys have a what what did you guys learn lately in wrestling i learned something Mm -hmm. i learned that um almost every faction in wwe has a women's wrestler in it that's the one i was gonna do Mm -hmm. oh is that i'm sorry well i'll I'll backpedal off of yours but go ahead and finish that um and i think that there would be some interest in doing another mix max challenge Mm-hmm. So I was interested in looking at um, the viewership totals for the Mixed Max Challenge, and uh, it's exactly what I would expect. It's, you know, you get massive a much, uh, amount of viewership on the first two episodes, mm-hmm. and it drastically falls off. And then everybody it's wants like to... like any show. And then everybody see wants to see who wins at the end, so the, the viewership goes up at the end. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, sure, do it. Uh, I also learned about uh every faction in the wwe having a lady added to it and i think i feel like there is an upcoming storyline with the return of Zelina vega building because i saw her and Liv morgan have a bit of an online spat this morning that could also just be nothing mm-hmm. but what i also learned is that nxt for as good of wrestling as it puts on has pacing issues with their storylines, especially with the women's division. The pro- the potential is there. The talent is certainly there, but some sort of, some sort of schedule needs to be structured around these stories. Yeah. Not everything can end with. The they turn. Fight. Yeah. The cat yeah. fight thing we're talking about. Like, yeah, I can't remember that was on show or before, but um, it was on the show. It was on. Yeah, it, it, it all matches together. Plus, we were like off air for a while. I don't know. Like, you know, Patreon. <laughs> hey, Patreon did not get off air, by the way. So, um, I, I, so like my, and again, not watching the most recent uh, uh, weeks of this. I'm kind. I'm pretty much on PLE watching with uh, with NXT now. I felt like so many of the women, and of course, there's there's um, the 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 two that were going for the the. Women's North American Championship, for example, were tremendous. I cannot remember the Kalani and Sol Ruka. Yes, yes, are fantastic. But I felt like for so long, like um, it had that uh, the ladies all blended together. You're just like this, like everybody kind of was the same. Everybody's going for the same look. It felt all obviously the, everybody's all the for sure felt the same. The what? Yes. All the all the women's entrances. All the entrances. For sure felt the same. Yeah, it was all like it was. It felt like it, it. Everybody's obviously showing more talent than than this, and I don't mean to demean it in this in this comment, but it felt like the divas like when it was all just like blonde you know model girls you know it felt like we were going back towards that it was like everybody was showing more ass and tits and like and performing but still it was like that seemed to be the goal at that point right 
Um, and and I don't know. Is that did that come off to you for a period there? Is it still in that? I mean, we talk about the kind of the terrible stories, but that's um, going on I mean, right now. For, um, yes, I I think for a while. Um, and I think it's still to an extent now, um, it's hard for me to distinguish um, between the women's characters, um, aside from the obvious, you know, the telltale characters like, um, like you know, like given your Wendy Chews, like mm-hmm. your extreme mm-hmm. characters, absolutely, absolutely, your extreme characters like your Sol Rukas and your Wendy Chews. Mm-hmm. Um, to my mind, I can't think. I mean, Kalani Jordan, sure, but I, I I can't think of any other distinguishing characteristics, um, besides some of these women. I mean, like obviously, it's like w- when you're starting out wrestling, you're told to get an extreme gimmick mm-hmm. because it's something to fall back on. It's something for people to memorize you by, and I feel like a good portion of these women aren't getting that advice where it's like, hey, pick something extreme and just go for it. Yeah, it's like they're, it's like they're being told to blend in or something. Where, yeah, right? it seems like because a lot of these a lot of these girls like didn't start out in professional wrestling. Like they, mm-hmm. they could get drafted from like doing gymnastics or right. track mm-hmm. or something. Right. Like that. There's 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 a, a talent that uh, athletes that just won gold medals that are part of the NIL pro- program that they were mentioning last night. And I, I Simone Biles for NXT. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I would cry. I would cry. That'd be but, tremendous. But the thing is, is like I don't think they have a plan for them other than that. Where no. it's just no. like, here's this gymnast, now they're a professional wrestler. Where I think that was the problem with um mm-hmm. I can't remember the main roster girl's name. She's in the tag team. They won the tag team championships really fast. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. But she came from American Ninja Warrior. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I actually watched the clip with Steve Amell, and she was the helper. Like yeah. she was like the 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 guide or whatever while mm-hmm. he was doing it for like Celebrity Ninja Warrior. And I was like, I know who she is. Uh, Kat is Kat is Zero or something yeah, like that's that. Her, yeah. That's her shoot name. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think she. They. They were so concerned. Katana Chance. No? Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. No, okay. I think Katana Chance is the other one. Okay. Yeah. But her partner, we got you. Her partner. Yeah. But I, I think they were so concerned about making sure that they had cohesive tag moves and that she didn't look like a slouch in the ring that they didn't give her yeah. anything. Like, I don't think they taught her stage presence but or anything still, like that. But there's still there's promo class and things like that. Sure, there. but she's yeah. on the main roster. Is she doing and, promo class? Because she's in St. Louis today, and then she's got to travel to... That's true. Wherever. Yeah, like, you're past that. You better have it by now. You're learning yeah. on the job. Yeah. Right. So she never got that training where it, so mm. it's like, it's kind of like she has to just do this gimmick until mm. it inevitably is done. And then she's going to have to figure out something because it doesn't seem like they had a, like a plan for her for a gimmick or anything like that. Mm-hmm. We got some, what I learned, what we learned from the chat room. Uh, Mad one says, I learned that Rhea is finally getting her comeuppance for gaslighting Dom for months before he kicked Edge in the dick. <laughs> Dude, seriously, though. <laughs> Who is the bad guy here, you know? Well, it's like, I'd come to think of it, like, have you seen Rhea never kissed Dom that entire time when they were doing that storyline? Right. Like, licked him as all, well, right? That was at the very end, but mm-hmm. it's like, you can't even, that, like, it's like Dom and Liv are kissing all over on on mm-hmm. on television now, and it's like they're it's doing like, that like gross Edge and Lita kiss yeah, from back yeah. in the day. But it's like, but it's like if you're Dom, you've been you've been getting like you mm-hmm. you've, you've been, been getting edged. You seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I, I, I don't care. I'll say it. I didn't want to say it. But like, it's like, yeah, you've just been getting, you've been getting cucked for two years. It's like, <laughs> you need oh, we're to, just going fucking down the hole here, aren't we? Now, yeah. you, need to, now you need to get some, someone who actually wants you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's almost 11 p.m., so this is the time for us to start using those words. I guess you're that's right. right. That's right. The kids are in bed. There you go. And uh, NCIS has already shot somebody in the head two hours ago. <laughs> um, as we've learned, L- this is what I learned in wrestling this L- week. Listen, I, listen, NX, NCIS will start an episode with snake death and then two mer- and then back to back murders within the span of like a two minute cold open and then it'll be like then now forever together (laughs) (laughs) for the kids um yeah someday we will we will talk about the dissonance between like not paying attention to the programming you're putting on and 
you know, Good how day. that translates to audiences that mm-hmm. are appropriate for the content versus not appropriate. Dude, I've watched but so that's... I've watched so many like first ten minutes of Burn Notice. <laughs> it's like it's crazy, but you, that you kind of know what the story is, Dude, right? That, like you're like you're like okay, so this guy's not in the CIA, but he's taking CIA missions because he's dead. <laughs> like he's supposedly dead because they burn your name when you don't work for the CIA anymore, or something like. <laughs> that and dude i don't know it was he's he, trying to clear his name dude he's Empress always like campbell's here it was it was always like hawaii 5 in the sense like they were always wearing like hawaiian shirts and, they're, like, in miami, they're in miami because they're in miami yeah listen i've watched the entire series of burn notice so like, again you're, you're talking really, to the wrong guy here dude you're the one guy that after <laughs> all ends you're just like yes burn notice <laughs> i can't wait that was the well, dvr that was the dvr for sure and listen i spent my entire childhood watching NCIS and Law and Order SVU, neither of which are appropriate for children. Yo, yo, the, N- he- the NCIS chat in the chat room is crazy right now. <laughs> it wasn't until I was in like a hospital room having a panic attack because an episode of SVU was on that I that I realized, you know what? Maybe I'm not old enough for this. <laughs> Maybe I'm not okay. But by yeah. then it was too late. Uh, listen, I had three channels, and I'm, I learned a lot from designing women, okay? Uh, I have in the chat room, Matt, True Prince Bro says, I learned that when Envy Young asks you to chop someone, you chop them, even if you end up hurting your hand from chopping the Reverend yeah, as yeah. hard as I could at the Enjoy Show this past weekend. I yeah. didn't look at the footage, but yeah, typically when you hurt your hand chopping somebody. I, there's a lot. I mean, nobody knows. Like, I don't, I'm always worried when that happens and they go to the fans with that. Somebody's just going to straight punch the guy in the face like if it's oh, like Wallace or somebody no, like that you, that's why you can't I'm do so it. worried about you can't that do it around kids too because as yeah. soon as you have your hands behind your back they're going straight for your dick man <laughs> <laughs> some of them not even on purpose they just can't reach no, see, higher dude, some of these eight ten year old kids man you get you get them one you get them a free look at your cock and they're going <laughs> They're 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 like you are not giving me playmates when you get older. Not a chance. Tina learned uh, because of Seth Rollins still has a uh, cherish PTSD with Cody and KO ring segment. We were setting up. Uh, they, they were setting up them with uh, 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 Cody was trying to give KO the uh, 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 title shot in Berlin. Mm-hmm. And and, and, and uh, Kevin said no. <laughs> No, I and then, don't and then, it. No, and then, and then they said that they were going to give it to Roman. And he was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" Actually, hey, you know what? Hey, hey now. Actually, no, that's, that's a good. That's a good rundown of what happened. It's like actually, what? you know what? This actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Listen, we should just have Mikey do like give me the like the general summary of SmackDown. If no, if in you, mostly if, grunts. If you want to, if you want to do that and have that on your show every week, <laughs> we can for sure. That should do be a that. TikTok. That you should. That should be a TikTok series. You know, we talked about like the thing that's not your match clips that takes off on TikTok. Yeah. Oh. There it that. is hey did you not watch well i hear i'm gonna help you out you know i'm the i'm gonna give you the cliff snow so what happened on smackdown I'm this gonna week need, i'm gonna need you need you to edit the footage of, of smackdown to make it sense with to make sense of it with my mouth though <laughs> With the, with the, the bad, it'll look like like a like Godzilla just film like, kind of thing like where it's like it's it's the bottom it's the bottom fourth right so it'll be <laughs> It's just yeah. it's just yeah. sped up SmackDown so it makes sense when I'm talking. Yes, or, or, there you go. Or just like you editing like the clips of just like the big points. That, like yeah, for exactly. instance, like that that one uh, Money in the Bank match in the building. Anyway, Rey Mysterio died, and it's just the clip of Rey being flung off. And he the- came back around and says, "Hi guys, no, I'm fine." <laughs> then he got his eye ripped out. <laughs> but it got better. But it got better. Don't worry, it healed. It, it healed. The and eyes now healed. My idiot son. <laughs> okay, Ray trolling Dom was funny as shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that was so funny. Mm-hmm. But then they just keep going back to it. Well, yeah, because you always want to fight your dad. Especially yeah. if you're rebelling. I know, and now it's just them. like a random thing. It's just like, Dom. Dom, you've been a bad boy on Raw, so now you're going to wrestle your dad next week. And he's like, oh, shit. And Ray just comes out like, hi, son. Are you are you past this phase yet? Just, no. Okay. Okay. Another chop for you. Yeah. Whack. Yeah. I learned that I, I appreciate when a wrestling match ends up in a dunk tank. Oh, oh, I yeah, saw that I clip. It's not the first okay. time I've seen it, and I'm sure it won't be the last. You, you know, they came back wet, and I was like... <laughs> 
I didn't. <laughs> You're like, what's going on? No, because like I didn't watch the match, and I was like, still like we were still kind of like calling. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. rest of the rest of ours. Because you were in like a seven person scramble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they come back and they're like wet, and I thought I was like, man, it was just it must have been sweating a lot. <laughs> it must be really hot out there. And then, and then I is saw. There a, is there a leak? And then I saw Scotty's video, and I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I've just been seeing, I was unfortunately out of town, so I didn't get to see the show, but oh. all the clips I've seen are just wild. Mm-hmm. And ridiculous. It's so much fun up there. I, that's, I, I love it. Like It's a hill over, so I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, I literally just popped in, watched the show, and oh, popped yeah. the fuck even, out. I didn't even have to get out on the freeway because there was um, there was construction going on, so yeah, I, I, yeah. I literally just like went up a side it's street. It's nice. I, I like wrestling close to my house. Like, oh my like this God, is great. Yes. This is great. More. Si- this is why I want more city wrestling. Thank you. No, any time that I don't like... God, I love enjoy, but I think if I have to drive down to this house side one more time, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take the tea. <laughs> Fair. I'm just take the tea and just, just, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. And, well, and the problem is, is like, you guys don't have like the motorized scooters here yet. Well, we did, and then we got rid of them. <laughs> Wait, was there like a bill that you guys passed? That you yeah, yeah, like, we had them for like anymore? a year or two, and uh, they just like I think last summer they cut them out. There's still stands downtown where they were. Oh, where they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Are you allowed to have like a personal one? Yeah, yeah, because I know, <laughs> I know, um, Gannon has like his tiny little motorcycle that he drives. Oh my around god, he what? rode that to Dude, Taco Mania, I and that was what? so. Wait a minute, I've you know not what? Seen this. You know what? When he comes, this is what he, I learned in wrestling. I was this say, when you come to Taco Mania, this uh, I am not going to Taco Mania. You're not going to Taco Mania because there's, sh- there's a show in West Virginia I have to do. Oh, fair I'm, enough. This Help. is the one I'm missing. Well, I'll if, take a little photo for you. Thank I'll, you. Please. I've got, I've got you. I've got better. Because remember that vlog series I was doing while I was still able to wrestle, mm-hmm. which I will eventually be getting back to for people who like that. I have a clip of Ganon rolling up on mm-hmm. on the bike in my Taco Mania v- v- vlog. Yeah, no, I was waiting for him to get to the building because I was wrestling him that day. And he just pulls up in this tiny, like, teeny, <laughs> tiny little motorcycle. And how tall is Ganon, for those that don't know? Well, I, I, it's, 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 it's a... It's, it's he's really he's tall, like six foot five, six, six seven, seven yeah. something like that. Big, That's big. a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I maybe the motorcycle on me wouldn't have looked so small, but just because he was driving it, it was like, oh my god, he looked like he was puttering along on this little thing. It was crazy. And oh. and he just casually rolled up. He's built at six five, by the way. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was making that fucking noise. <laughs> But yeah, there's a there's a clip if you there's a clip of it that I have oh, somewhere. I gotta see this. I gotta see this. It's the uh, if you go onto my YouTube page, it'll be it'll be the vlog that has me <laughs> with a bird on my arm as the thumbnail. Tatiana from the chat room, can you set the video to of Gannon on the motorcycle to Kid Rock's American Badass? I will certainly right. try. Gannon I American will certainly badass. try. <laughs> that is great. Guys, thank you so much. Top Rope Tabletop is this Friday, 7 p.m., IndieWrestling.us, YouTube, Network, Facebook, all the stuff. You can check it out there or after the fact, it'll be on demand. Again, the unwelting Tatiana, who will be around places as soon as uh, she's healed up here. Keep an, keep an ear out for me. Yeah, for the so next there'll be some weeks. announcements. Mikey Montgomery, That's of course. Me. Uh, your your match with MV Young and I won't spoil it. Uh, it, it enjoy wrestling is up on their YouTube page yep, now. Immaculate is up on uh, is up on YouTube. Please check it out. Um, go on indiewrestling.us to watch any of my matches that I've had at RPW. Mm-hmm. Um, you can check me out on Twitter at Montgomery underscore M twenty one. You can check me out on Instagram at Mikey Montgomery Pro. Um, and then. Coming up shortly, I think I'm going to be doing some sort of like uh, review show coming up shortly. So, Oh, like you just did for SmackDown? Well, no. I'm <laughs> no, no, I think we talked about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to start doing uh, this thing where, you know, I ask, uh, I, I get a bunch of people to throw in like media for me to watch and then I'll review something every week. Okay. So nice. it'll be like a grab bag type thing. Okay. I like it. I don't Thank know you. what to call it yet. So if you have submissions, please put it in the chat. Yes, uh, or hit them up on the social medias yes. as well. Those social medias I just mentioned. Yes. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, this is going to be fun. Next week, we are scheduled to have the NWA uh, what is it? Midwest Champion, Exodus Pro Champion, 
Pretty Boy Smooth is going is uh, scheduled to join us in the studio, so uh, stay tuned for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. There might be some other special guests in as well. Uh, so uh, that's going to be fun leading into. And of course, you maybe saw the announcement. NWA yeah, YouTube page is going to be hosting the next Exodus Pro live show on the twenty fourth. So I'm sure we could be talking about that. That just that actually just broke here um, a few hours before this show actually. Uh, that we got the official word for that. So very excited on that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun project here um, coming up. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much to our guests. Thank you so much, Mayhemers. We'll see you guys next time. Patreon, stay tuned for more conversation. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.